in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed We cast our crowns before the highest royalty. I am undone before your glorious majesty. I cast my crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before your glorious majesty. One more time. I cast my crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before your glorious majesty. You're the King of kings and Lord of lords. You are the King. Hey, you're the King of kings and Lord of lords. Your glorious majesty. You're the King of kings and Lord of lords. You are the Lift your hands, lift your 
voices. Spirit of the living God tonight, we have come. We came believing. We came trusting. We came expectant. Believing that you are able to lift us. You are able to open our eyes. You are able to show us your ways. I pray, O oh God, that tonight our hearts will be greatly edified. I pray that no one who has come here tonight will leave disappointed. We decree and declare that there is the hearing of faith and even the working of miracles. And we vow tonight as always that you will take the glory and that you alone will be lifted in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Please be seated. Please be seated. It's good to have everyone again. I trust that tonight we will have some time to pray. We didn't do justice to our prayer last week. Amen. Um, we're to take come up here that part two, but I'm suspending that tonight. We can take that next week. The Lord put something in my heart that I think is very, very powerful that we must listen to. And then we pray. Amen. Every time God sends his word, his word comes with power, his word comes with healing, deliverance, and hope. Praise the Lord. This afternoon, the Lord showed me something that it's important we discuss and then we pray about every once and again um, our assignment is not only to prepare sermons but to be discerning enough to see what God is saying and to understand what he is doing per time the Bible talks about the sons of Issachar they had understanding of the times and they knew what Israel ought to do. Praise the Lord. While I was just putting together this that the Lord uh, would have me share tonight, 
um, I got a text message that for me was again a confirmation and um, there's a lot going on in our world and in our society that is important we are alive to it we understand it and then we pray there is a growing trend of frustration please listen very carefully of depression and exhaustion these three words the holy spirit used speaking to me frustration depression and exhaustion to be exhausted and the lord told me that these are spirits that have been sent to the body even at such a time as this to shortchange many people from stepping into the fullness of God's word and God's purposes in their lives even for this season and so my my exhortation tonight as we pray is going to deal with two categories of people please listen number one those who are severely under attack in their lives in this season if you belong to this category i have a word for you tonight that there are people there are families there are individuals who it looks like they are in very very trying seasons of their lives where all hell has broken loose over that individual over that family and it's important for you to be guided on the steps to take even to victory number two those who um are not necessarily attacked but they are going through phases in their lives that are nothing unusual as far as greatness and destiny is concerned it's important that we are used by god to help you interpret the happenings in your life so that you are not like them who are void of understanding it is important that believers mature into understanding times seasons and the dealings of the spirit that comes with all of those times are we together now so we're going to deal with these two categories of people can you lift your voice in one minute again and ask the lord for understanding father grant me understanding grant me understanding grant me understanding hallelujah amen please pay attention those following online pay attention if you know someone who belongs to these categories even if not you please pay attention for their sake hallelujah there are not many things that can discourage a christian please listen carefully um, but the few things that can discourage a christian when they are there and they remain the effect of their presence can be disastrous i have identified two major um, issues if i would say that discourage christians number one is on answered prayer there's almost nothing more frustrating to a believer who genuinely loves god as a tragedy of unanswered prayer that people lift up their voice to heaven believing that god is alive releasing all their faith as much as they know and then not getting the answer that should be number two is an unfruitful christian life an unfruitful christian life that means that when your life with time is void of certain evidences that should be testaments of your service your work to for god it's very very frustrating when a believer gets born again and opens up his heart serving the lord giving his best and then with time cannot see um, the evidences there are evidences testaments 
that help us and help believers around us to appreciate the hand of God upon our lives. So unanswered prayers and then an unfruitful Christian life. Now write this down, please. There is a goal. Let me start with those who are severely being attacked by the gate of hell. There is a goal. There is an object behind every attack of Satan. Listen carefully. That every time hell launches an attack on an individual, on a ministry, on a family, on a couple, there is something behind the thinking of the devil and his cohorts. And the Bible did not leave us in the dark as to what Satan is really looking for. And if you do not understand, then you will continually be defeated by all of the, the attacks of Satan. The first goal behind every attack, the first thing the devil seeks to achieve is to destroy your confidence in God and the integrity of his word please never forget this that every time the devil attempts to attack a believer he is attempting to attack your confidence in god and the integrity of his word what satan is really attacking is the integrity of god's word what satan is attacking is your confidence in god the bible says to cast not away your confidence why because it has a great recompense of reward are we together your confidence in god i don't know if i've shared it here but i remember i was in joss for a meeting when i met a gentleman who was talking to me about his dad and he told me his dad was once a reverend in one of these great denominations around and haven't been frustrated repeatedly in the field the man not only turned away from God he made up his mind that he was going to move to another faith entirely he was so frustrated no school fees for his children no meaning for his life nothing seemed to work and he said look I've served this God I've preached about this God but I'm going to have to stop lying to myself it does not work you will think that you may never get to a point where you can consider this. Let me tell you something. Life has a way of pushing a man, a family, an individual to a point where you will doubt the reality of God. Was it not John the Baptist under pressure who said, go and ask him if he's the Messiah or should we expect another? For John to be thinking of another, as the person who ordained Jesus, he should tell you what situations and circumstances can do. Are we together? So your confidence in God and the integrity of his word. Number two, the goal of every attack is to introduce the spirit of fear. This subject of fear is very, very, very important. You will be amazed at how many believers have been utterly destroyed because they became the victims of fear. The Bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion. There is a reason why he says that. Fear is terrible. It's a destructive spirit. Every other spirit stands in the line waiting for fear to open the door. No other spirit can open any door that fear does not open. Failure waits for fear to open the door. Death waits for fear to open the door. Discouragement waits for fear. All the spirits line up with the potentials of the havoc they can wreck. But then they wait for fear. A man who conquers fear has conquered many spirits automatically. The Bible says, and to deliver them who through fear, the fear of death now, have all their lifetime been subject to bondage. Praise the Lord. Fear. Believers live in fear. Fear of the unknown. Fear of this and that and that and that. Today you see young people, even teenagers, having high blood pressure. 
this is something that a teenager should have no business with ordinarily but fear 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 of the future how will tomorrow be how will this happen how will that happen and that fear creates a lot of worry matthew chapter 6 jesus took out time to teach and explain again and again on the fruitlessness of worry he said which of you by worrying can add even a cubit to his hair he said consider the lilies of the valley consider the birds of the air they break a fundamental law of sowing and reaping yet your father your heavenly father is benevolent enough to make sure they are not hungry please listen very carefully sooner or later in your christian experience hell will be interested in you i guarantee you except you do not love the lord and you do not keep growing a time will come when the impact that you continue to make will attract the attention of hell who is this young man who wants to rise and do what has never been done in this family for as long as you remain down that's all right but then you you it's like a it's like a spiritual thermometer there is a level when you rise to you attract the attention of hell and they say what is going on here if we allow this young moses he can tomorrow be the deliverer do not take the baby for granted kill him while he's a baby don't allow him grow the potentials of his growth can be dangerous and so discouragement comes discouragement so many believers listen so many families have had especially in this time that we live in their faith shaken discouraged students are discouraged workers discouraged graduates discouraged pastors discouraged church members you know it looks like there is this air of discouragement and depression when you say praise the lord people cannot say hallelujah in their minds they say for what hallelujah comes from the word halal yeshua praise the one who saves that's what it means you say where is the salvation that i should praise him talk to an average believer about god he will prefer you talking about rapture than talking about the faithfulness of god don't mention that word faithful to him because he tells you i don't know what you are talking about that reality is foreign to my experience i do not yet know god as faithful faithful means keeping to your word faithful means justifying your integrity at all times please listen very carefully so believers have been attacked here and there and they think that the attack listen they think the attack is just on them just because they are christians or just because the devil does not want them to have a job or have a child and so on and so forth listen the devil is looking more than you he's he's trying to use you to make a statement to god that you are not faithful so when you read scriptures like since i was young and now i am old he says i have never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed beg for bread and you think of all your family members in light of this he said but this is a lie this is not true foreign to my experience and when the devil wants to make the statement stronger he will handpick serious believers he knows the impact listen the discouragement of a serious believer has more impact than that of a believer that is not serious someone who is not serious with god if he tells you things are not working you tell him what did you ever engage i mean we we watched you in in all that laziness no prayer no nothing but when a brother who has been a prayer warrior serving in church when a sister who has been serving faithfully in church two years three years no child four years no child then she now gets pregnant and everybody begins to rejoice then at the fifth or sixth month she will lose the baby in a way that can cause a problem listen carefully that impact another believer will now say my god what is this if you don't listen to what i'm telling you a time will come you will not see the need to continue again there are many believers who are sitting down but they've left god since they are just coming to church because they know if you don't see him in church you say i didn't see you here yesterday but the truth is that their hearts are not with god again 
they they are not yet bold enough to go to a herbalist but you can be sure one leg is already coming out of the things of god and that includes preachers the frustration of fasting and praying for genuine spiritual power going around and emptying my accounts in need for impartation only to return back with nothing that shows i was called when an aspect of your life has results and then another aspect does not have results you can at least find consolation listen but when every area of your life lacks result is a cause for concern usually it will not disturb you till other brethren start saying but why is this so an attack on your confidence in god you started your christian experience loving god you made bold and audacious statements about god and while you made that statement hell kept quiet like they didn't hear you i will never leave the lord no matter what happens i will stand for him i will stand by him it doesn't matter and now five years without a child and you don't have the courage to make the same statement you made 10 years ago i will never give anybody bribe to get a job remember you said it and now here is a job that can reward you only if you can fish out one hundred and fifty thousand, you can pay it back in a month your integrity is at stake you made a statement that you will never bribe but jobs continue to pass you again and again until the day your loved ones look at you and say you are a foolish portrait of a believer watching you is a discouragement to me at first you would think that it did not touch you until you sit later on and say but god are you not watching and then heaven is silent are we together When believers do not get results, they are vulnerable. When believers do not get results, they are vulnerable. Please listen to me. When believers consistently do not get results, they are vulnerable. They are put in a position where the, the faithfulness of God seems to be an issue that, they, that is worth debating about. Behind every attack is the desire to challenge your confidence in God. It's your desire to challenge the integrity of God's word. Hallelujah. I got a text this afternoon about um, a gentleman who killed himself or so. I, I heard the story that there was a gentleman who killed himself. And if I'm right, I was told that the gentleman's brother or relative also killed himself now imagine please ladies imagine that you gave birth to children who killed themselves not that they died not a car accident not sickness you left your child hugging your child in the morning and say make sure i see you in the evening and then you see people running somewhere and you join them thinking it's someone else's child and there you see your child and the testimony is that he killed himself Think of what society will do to you. Think of what other women will say about you. Say, this woman must have been wicked. It means that you do all kinds of things. Sometimes, it seems like death is better than living. This is why people have the courage to kill themselves. And if you ignore a man that killed himself and don't help other people very soon an entire area will begin to kill themselves it's a spirit but i've taught you how spirits work they don't come and work with nothing there is a raw material they use your frustration as a raw material they use your depression as a raw material they create a they, they create a system around your frustration and that becomes the entry and the access point to your life but we have come tonight to call the devil a liar in the name of jesus christ it says but i know whom i have believed hallelujah and i am 
persuaded. Listen to me. It is important. I will continue to teach this here, Koinonia. It is important the depth of your spiritual foundation. Remember my teaching a few weeks ago? That the deeper and the more solid your foundation, the more unbending you will be in the face of unfavorable situation. There are people who have dug so deep, they have become like Paul. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. What shall separate us from the love of God? And then he begins to list a lot of things. Shall persecution, shall famine, shall A, B, and C. Frustration. And then the spirit of fear. You look around and see fear all over people's eyes. Fear. Financial fear. Marital fear. Fear of children. Fear of raising children. It will be very irresponsible of any preacher and any man of God to ignore these truths, especially in light of the realities that are in our world today. When people begin to hang themselves, when people begin to run away in discouragement, go to the hospitals, go to the psychiatric wards, and see all kinds of people, young people, talking to themselves out of depression and frustration. Something is wrong. There has to be a people who will rise and say, Satan, you are a liar. Jesus is still on the throne and our, conviction, our convictions will not shake, we will not bend. Say, I reject fear. Say it again. Say, I reject fear. One more time. Say, I reject fear. Fear is a spirit. Reject it. Open your mouth in one minute. I reject fear. You are a spirit. I may not know everything about tomorrow, but I know the one who holds tomorrow. Hallelujah. He holds tomorrow. I reject fear. I reject fear. I reject fear. Fear is a spirit and all spirits are received. Any spirit that is received can be rejected. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of love, the spirit of power and of a sound mind. Fear of excelling in ministry. Fear of marriage. Fear of children. Fear of the future of children. Fear of finances. How can I tell if I will live to see tomorrow? How can I tell if I will not die in a ghastly motor accident tonight? Mm. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Please look up. The believer who will never allow his confidence to be shaken and a believer who refuses to receive the spirit of fear that is the believer that will weary satan to victory literally that you can weary the devil with your convictions that regardless of what happens around you you can stand in faith and say my confidence lord more than ever i trust you more than ever i love you more than ever i will follow you as for me and my house when a husband loses his job in one day by the next month the wife loses her job by the third month the child loses admission or something and three of them are seated with a bible in the midst of them full of many promises and then they do not know what to do let me tell you something my brothers and sisters at that time heaven is watching even as hell is also watching those who will not curse God because of their pain if your pain will make you curse God you are small if your pain makes you curse God you are weak if your pain makes you curse God your foundation is not deep enough 
Are we together? Job's life kept being manipulated so that he will find offense in God. Even his wife said, look, Mr. Man, this is too bad. Curse God and die. Curse God and die. While I was still preparing this note this afternoon, one of our precious ladies in the worship team just sent me a text and said, they just told me my father has gone to be with the Lord. I'm sure she woke up this morning preparing with her colleagues to celebrate the faithfulness of God tonight, only to receive a report in a year of extraordinary fruitfulness that your father has died. Are we together now? Yes. There is a couple, I don't know if they were able to make it here, but I'll be very impressed if they made it. The devil has attempted to challenge the husband and the wife again and again and again. And that man of God in his resilience, he said something that touched me one time while we were talking. He said, I will never be discouraged and I will never find fault in God. God is faithful. This is the language that moves heaven. That the devil says, can't you curse God? Are you blind? You still maintain your integrity and say God is alive? I got so many text messages from our young ones who wrote jam. Apostle, I've heard you change people's jam. This is what I got. This is what I want to get. Pray. And they send sometimes more than 10 times that text. I believe I will die believing God is a miracle worker. But the question is, what if it does not change? <laughs> you don't like this part of God. What if it does not change? What happens to you when your expectation does not come to pass? What happens when what you saw in your vision does not manifest physically what happens when god tells you by march you are a millionaire and by march you don't even have a job though he slay me yet will i trust him though he slay me yet will i trust him you are eating this bread because the journey is far man of god what happens when you start ministry with a lot of zeal assurances from financial partners just that we are here we believe in your vision we will stand by you to the end four months they say we've tried don't come near us for that rent again i confess to you my brothers and my sisters that life can be very trying life can be trying to the point that even Jesus would cry at Gethsemane and say, being in the flesh, I thought it would be easier. But now I've carried the burden of men. And even as the son of God, I confessed that men are trying. Surviving the betrayals and the pain. Surviving the nakedness and the shame. Now alone, praying in Gethsemane Jesus wept prayed till his tears became like drops of blood is God blessing you today there is a reason behind the attack that has come is currently on you or is on the way coming let me tell you this <laughs> there are many believers who convince themselves that they are not creating any trouble is the reason why they never get serious with God because they hope that the devil will be busy attacking the Joshua Selmans who are causing trouble. Don't practice the foolishness of Esther. Mordecai told Esther that this plot is for all of us. It's just broken in phases. Phase one is for those outside the palace, but phase two will catch up with you. For as long as you have named the name of Christ, let me tell you, you have made yourself an arch enemy to Satan and he will come. I assure you, 
Jesus is fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. He's done fasting and the first personality he meets is Satan. And hear what the Bible says. He departed for a season. For a what? Season. That means I'm coming. I don't mean to scare you, but I'm opening you up to the reality of living. He is coming. It's not only God that is coming. Maranatha is not just for God alone. Satan too is coming. Satan just like faith cometh. Is it not in your Bible? The thief cometh. He doesn't have to be invited. The thief cometh. To every family he will come. To every ministry he will come. To every life. Please hear me. He will come. Oh, apostle, I've been enjoying my life. Everything has been wonderful. Keep going. Keep going. The world is not too large for his presence to reach. Satan is an expert in mobility. He testified his expertise in mobility before God. Where are you coming from? He said, from to and fro the earth. That's not a problem. I can voyage as many times as it will take to meet you. He will come. Let your finances begin to glorify God. He will come. Let your children begin to glorify God. He will come. Insult me today and thank me years later, but you must listen. Let your ministry begin to glorify God. He will come. Hmm. Let your life begin to glorify God. He will come. Let your home begin to glorify God. He will come. I think it was last week or so, I had the opportunity to counsel a couple. I could not believe when they told me the antecedents of their marriage and the level of, of love and passion and friendliness they had. I could not believe that a couple who were disbonded today would be looking for a divorce. I said, what, what was so bad that you want to go out? Man of God, I've said my own. We didn't come here to debate. It's a conclusion we have made. I said, take it easy. There has to be a way. Hmm. Life, ba. If you don't know God, one day you will sit down on the road and say, before life kills me, let me kill myself. When you see people do foolish things, don't think they were born foolish. Are we together? When people go and buy this rat poison, what they call it, and add it to rice and turn it to eat and die, they are not stupid people. There is a way life can push you. Huh? As a lady, when a man has done your traditionals, has done everything, the invitation letter has come out, and then he just looks at you and casually says, I don't feel like doing it again. Because somebody told me you are a witch. Go and tell your father they can go with the dowry. I'm gone. At that point, you would think you would smile and say, oh, no problem. What is there? God told you to live my life. You, you will cry and not know what direction to turn to. It is true that life can push you. It is true that life can challenge you. Recently, I had a conversation with a man that broke me. I was going to pray for the man. True story. And the man looked at me and said, Apostle, let me finish the story. He said, as I'm talking to you right now, my beloved wife is in the mortuary. I don't even have the money to go and bury her. I'll not mention tribe, but he comes from a region where burial is not something that comes easy. And the man was just smiling. I said, your wife is dead. He said, yes, sir. Dead. My wife. I stood before everybody to exchange vows. We agreed to grow old together. Now she's gone. You think they didn't pray to raise that body back? The guy I'm talking to you is a born again and tongue-talking Christian. What happens? You see, I've been to the mortuary many times, my brothers and sisters. As a man of God, you can imagine what happens when people die. I've been to the mortuary. They have closed me and left me with dead bodies in a mortuary. Alone. 
Why? Because they believe I'm anointed. And I believe I'm anointed. And I stood before a dead body that would not listen to me. Wake up in the name of Jesus. And the body is looking. There are times when life will act like that dead body. Hmm. There are times when your finances will act like that dead body. There are times when your marriage can act like that dead body. There are times when everything around your life can act like that. Please listen to me, believers. When you pray and nothing happens, and you pray again and nothing happens, and believers agree with you and nothing happens, you must know what to do. When the devil launches an attack, do you know what to do? Or do you just know that attack is real? Hallelujah. Years ago, I counseled one of our precious ladies. She's no longer here. And this lady told me that once a guy looks at her and says, I love you, I want to go and see your parents. That's the end of it. A strange being appears to her as usual. And that's the end of that relationship. If that guy does not get out of her life, the things that will get out of his life, you will not, his finances, just like Jonah, things will begin to leave. I can tell you that lady loves God and she's a Christian. Listen, if an unbeliever goes through certain things, it is natural. What happens when a Christian woman is barren? What happens when a Christian man is impotent? What happens when a Christian couple are broke? What happens when a Christian man and his wife and their children are standing in the name of the Lord and there is no roof for them that night? They don't know where they will spend the night. Yet Jesus is still Lord over their lives. Your confidence in God and the spirit of fear that comes upon you. A lecturer called me some months ago that he was relieved from his work. Not, not ABU here. One of the institutions. And I said, what happened? And just some issue that he, he truly told me under God. Now, it's not for me to vet the rightness, but from as a man of God, I can tell you I discern he was true. Some persons just cooked up one or two things like that and that was it. The case had been pending, pending, pending and finally they just threw that man away. Out. No job. And the man was telling me, he said, where do I start from? There were monies they were supposed to give him. Nobody's talking about it and everything has gone. I confess to you that life can be challenging. I confess to you that when Satan attacks you, he looks powerful because the attack is real. You will see it and sometimes you will wonder, Lord, where were you when this came? But tonight's message is for you. Let's look at a few scriptures. Hmm. John chapter 16 and verse 33. John 16, 33. We are really going to pray tonight. And when it's time to pray, please hold, even if it's prophetically, the hands of your loved ones and everybody you know should be listening to this message and lift them before God as we cry. John chapter 16 and verse 33. Everyone read with me. One to read. Jesus is speaking. Uh-huh. These things... I have spoken unto you what things that in me ye might find peace why in the world ye shall have tribulation listen listen Jesus is speaking to believers and saying the possibility of tribulation is something that will be part of your experience that means acclimatize your mind do not think it strange when these things happen. It says, 
be of good cheer. Why? Because I have overcome the world. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 17. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 17. Listen to this message, matured believers. And run away from some of these childish things that continue to give us very aberrated views of life. For our light affliction. Why will you use the word affliction for a Christian? One who is in Christ. One who has sustained victory. The fullness of the spirit. The fullness of the Godhead in Christ resides in him. Paul is speaking and says for our light affliction. Which is but for a moment he says. Worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. For our light afflictions. So it is not unusual for believers to go through afflictions. Nobody sits and prays for it. But that is for any reason you find that reality around your circumference. Do not think it strange. Rather be equipped with the understanding to deal with it to victory. Are we together now? Yes. I will never forget years ago I was encouraging a gentleman. Generally just sharing with him. I told him, I pray for you to get a job. But in case you don't get a job, I was sharing with him certain business ideas. And the guy almost shouted on my face, I, I reject, um, you know, that he rejected the statement I was saying that there will be delay in a job. You know, the Bible says he will not. I, did, I said, no, no, I'm a man of God. I pray, I'm not saying you will be delayed, but I'm saying if this possibility happens, while you wait for that blessing, be thinking of this and that. I don't mean to embarrass you, but till today, I'm not aware, except if he got it this year, but till today, he has not gotten a job. The same wisdom he would have listened to and his foolishness there is a difference between faith and foolishness they are not the same the same way a matured mother will be mentoring a young lady who is about to get married and get pregnant and say we do not we, we are not discouraging you but we are just saying that there might be these possibilities and that if this comes, there is a wisdom way to route it. No, I reject it. I, my, my womb is blessed. Nobody is arguing it until life shows you pepper and then you turn and say, ah, so this thing is like that. A man parked his car and ran to deal with somebody quickly and came out and met space his car had gone in the afternoon broad daylight the car that was dedicated in church don't forget don't forget almost every church dedicates cars this car was dedicated in the name of the Lord by a genuine man of God. Genuine oil was poured on it. And now a thief enters and the oil did not seem to do anything. The prophecy didn't seem to do anything. That guy kicked that car and ran away with it. And where were the angels that keep watch? Did the Bible not say that they will bear you up on their wings? What suddenly happened to that man who put a speaker, I am victorious, behind the car that was stolen? What happens when a believer is in church and armed robbers are in the house stealing? Have you not heard this? Or you don't say it in church. It should not be said, Abby. That you are worshipping God and rolling on the ground. Lord, I give you my heart. And an armed robber breaks your door. And the all-seeing eye of God does not seem to be able to restrain that robber. He enters your house and goes to look for the areas you just collected and carries it and runs away. You share the grace with joy and go back home into a week long of depression. I'm a man of faith. I'm a man that believes in miracles. 
but I must teach you the reality of navigating through these things in life. I don't mean to embarrass our precious lady, but one of our ladies here, I remember very clearly one time her mother it was in a it was in a night vigil they were praying not in a party not in a club a night vigil they were praying lifting up the name of the lord fiery prayer suddenly a woman stops drops dead and dies that's how the mother died i remember when that lady called me that night crying and saying, Apostle, how can my mother die in the place of prayer? It's the same thing like saying, how can Jesus die? But he died. How can life die? Life died. How can light be dark? Light became dark. Sometimes the unexplainable happens. Like life dying. Like resurrection being grounded on the cross. <laughs> James chapter 1 and verse 1 to 4 I like what this teaching is doing to you you will thank me tomorrow add it to your spiritual arsenals so that you will draw it forth in the days that are rainy days for some of you the dark cloud is already before you and you will need to know this James Let's go to verse, um, verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Why? Next verse. Knowing this, knowing this. Tell your neighbor, knowing this. There are things you need to know. Knowing this. This is your immunity. This is your basis for stability. Knowing this. There are things if you don't know, you cannot rejoice in the midst of pain. He says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Verse 4, he says, but let patience have her perfect work. Do you know what this means? Don't interrupt what is happening. Let patience have her perfect work, that ye might be mature and complete, wanting or lacking nothing. Jesus told us very clearly that it's not unusual for believers to be challenged by the gates of hell. And then also, the Bible did not leave us in the dark that the journey of the believer is not just a smooth road, that there are mountains and there are valleys in the making of great men in God's kingdom. Listen very carefully. There is a place where the refiner's fire I preached a controversial message years ago on the furnace of affliction and several people said don't mind that message just believe you know and so on and so forth there is a real experience in a believers making called the furnace of affliction I repeat there is a real experience in the making of men that are as precious as gold called the refiner's fire it is not the destroyer's fire. It is the refiner's fire. Are we together? Isaiah 43 and verse 1 and 2 says, Fear not, I have redeemed you. It says, I have called you by name. You are mine. Are we together? It says, Isaiah 43, 1 and 2. Fear not, I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. It says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. There are times that God will not say, I will be with you. He will say, I will help you. But there are other times he say, I'm there. Just find comfort that I'm there. There's no guarantee that I will put my hand in that process. But be assured that my presence is there. <laughs> and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. Now listen, he said when you walk through fire, you don't pass through fire, you walk. There is a roasting process that takes time. There is a separation. 
you don't put meat around fire and you have something nice you drop it there then turn it again then turn it back to where you turned before then turn it again and when it is done people enjoy it listen what do you think the anointing is have you found out how oil is made that the threshing floor is not a place of laughter that oil does not want to go through that train believers we have been spoon fed into believing that all it takes is to get born again and be filled with the Holy Spirit I want to be Apostle Joshua Selman I want to be Benny Hinn it is doable it is achievable but can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism that's what Jesus said whoever told you there is no cup to drink and whoever told you there is no baptism ah, there are times when your prayers will deliberately not be answered this is not a conventional teaching many people say God forbid all prayers are answered I agree it depends on the level you are seeing from because the Bible says there is the heel of the Lord it says who shall ascend to the heel of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place there are planes in the spirit and not every experience is the same at every plane there are planes that are general experiences and you can write a theology from that standpoint but you climb like the eagle to a mountain where the Holy Ghost defeathers you have you seen how eagles mount up and renew their wings they rise to a high altitude and right there by themselves they, they remove the old feather and they are left naked in the cold and they stand there and then suddenly new feather begins to come out slowly there are things that the tempo has been preset it will not be accelerated because of your tears it was designed to be that slow if the process hurries too much you will not learn what you should learn <laughs> mm. that you are trusting god for money to eat as soon as ten thousand came god said carry one thousand tight carry one thousand your own carry eight thousand my own go and sow and you say why did it come then uh, i'm 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 doing something to you that breaks the power of mammon in your life because what is coming to you, eye has not seen, ear has not heard. It has not entered the heart of any man. So I need to train you. If 10,000 is difficult for you to receive and you are shouting, I'm a millionaire, you are joking and flattering yourself. We continue to do these foolish things in church. That's why the world looks at us and says, these people, something is wrong with them. The faith life is not foolishness. People must be educated to understand the pathway. The way to the throne is the cross. You will never, there is no bypass. There is only one line. Man of God, hear me. You admire everyone who speaks under the influence of God's power. Fine. Let me tell you, when the anointing for service comes, it doesn't come as oil. It comes as olive. There is a breaking process that will turn that olive to the oil. It is true. There is a threshing floor in your life that is in the similitude of the threshing floor of Naboth. Where there are things that are threshed there. Unfortunately, it's not wheat. It is you. You are that living sacrifice that must lie there. Hear me. There are times that the things happening in your life can only be interpreted by those who have passed that road no other believer can see and it can make sense now god gives you a rule and says for the next five months i meet with you from 11 to 3 every night regardless of how tired you are and some man of God will tell you, no, it's not in the word. God doesn't do that. Pray when you need to pray. God gave you a will. I agree. And the man is right. He is not wrong. But with respect to your training, violate that instruction and power will be far from you. Far from you. Show us the ancient paths 
Would you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Show us the ancient path that so many have left. Would you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your Listen, the path to glory does not have laughter as part of the equation. Except you are laughing by the anointing. He that sows in tears, a farmer laughing by the farmer has not started farming. The size of the instrument alone will take away laughter. But you have to farm. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. There are many people who see every blessed man and just dishonor them. Ah, these young people, they just became rich. Please keep quiet. Find out the cross behind what you see. And then you will know that nobody was dashed well. You see young people with anointing, all these young boys, where did they get it from? Go and find out the pain. Find out what they were doing when you were sleeping. Find out the covenants that they, that they tied themselves with like a rope. All these people who have great ministry, be careful, oh, you don't know where they are getting the crowds from. You are joking. You go and find out people's cries and covenants with God. I know a man of God who said when he went to Lagos for the first time, he slept under the bridge. He was not a poor man. God instructed him to give everything he had. He got to Lagos and slept under the bridge like a fool. Imagine if you were his relative and you saw him. He said, sorry, uncle, what are you doing here? He said, God sent me. Imagine that it was your daughter that kind of man married. Won't you carry your daughter back home? But today everybody celebrates him. Listen, my brothers and my sisters, do not think it unusual when you are following the path of champions. It's a lonely road. Did you hear what I said? Do not think it unusual. I speak to you. There are many men and women of God here. You thought by now you will start a church. You are surprised you are still on, tra on training. There are others who are jumping classes and running around. Leave them home and stay quietly with God. Because there is a making. Ah, making. Ask a coach how a champion is built. The coach will subject that person through exercises. The person will run. The person will cry. Coach, I am tired. And the coach will say, no, this is not you. The version of you I seek to produce is not the you I'm seeing. Sometimes when God pushes you, it's proof of his confidence in you. Others got there and God said, no, they've reached their elastic limit. But for you, he says, no, I know what I put in you. Let's push a little more. There are certain levels of glory that I've been waiting for who will push to this level. Everybody stopped here. You can't, don't, don't disappoint me. Push a little further. On one side, believers can be attacked. But on another side, without an attack, the default design of the pathway to glory requires, like pilgrim's progress, there are mountains to climb. Listen very carefully. There are valleys to follow. There are times you will sleep in the desert. There are times you will not know where you are going. You will just keep going. And hope you are right. We didn't come this far by luck. We didn't come this far by chance. It is true we came by grace. But grace that was not abused. It is not grace that did the work grace empowered us to comply behind every glory are tears and blood sleepless nights and sacrifices as any great man 
champions hear me being a champion is not just a confession ask a pregnant woman when she gives birth to the baby like our dear one here who gave birth and we're all rejoicing but ask her how it was right now you are carrying something that others are not carrying don't expect them to understand you if everybody around you understands you it's a sign that you are not going anywhere there are times only God can understand you let me tell you there are times only God can understand you while others are sleeping the Holy Ghost takes away sleep from you he giveth his beloved sleep but from you he took it so that you will wake up and you are walking around your house and crying Lord what is the name of what you are doing with me he calls it refining Lord what is the name of what you are doing with my life is this how useless my life is going to be you have honored other people look at what you are doing at least show me where I'm going let me be convinced that you are leading me and he says the seeming confusion is part of the process so that I teach you that you don't have to understand me to follow me there are times that it's in your obedience that understanding comes Lord if you don't show me where I'm going I will not follow you will never get to the place of destiny there are times you start that journey far before it later makes sense come out of AI of the Chaldeans to a land that I will show you I don't give you no vision for it keep moving carry your child along because you will kill him sooner or later these are messages you will not hear in the church again it's not all about receive it's not all about be a champion the anointing does not work like that there is stability I show you the way of champions I show you the way of the ancient I show you the the way to build stamina where you are given the keys of territories to him that endures to the end that will give a crown and a white stone he said please don't let anybody deceive you if it is that cup you must drink of it if it's that baptism you will be baptized if it has not started it will start so I'm teaching you so that you will understand that when everything in your life looks strange and God says empty your account when you were a baby Christian you emptied your account and in 24 hours times 10 came so you took that mindset to rush and say, ah, if it's God, I know he's Jehovah Sharp Sharp. I agree, but not for your training. Sharp Sharp will be when you are on stage. Then you prophesy to someone and he gets a miracle alert. But I tell you, not during your training, you will get no miracle alert. What you will get is the faith to endure. I shared with you my story. Today I pray and people receive breakthroughs. I shared with you years ago, when out of hunger, I took a step of faith and joined a queue in First Bank, believing that miracle alert will come. This miracle alert thing didn't just start now. It was built in the spirit. So then death works in us, that life will work in you. Whatever you die to is what you give life to people in. Let me tell you, this is how it works. You have never been disappointed forget about carrying the power of god no it's not for children you must taste of this cup called shame you must taste of this cup called embarrassment till your ego is drained like a transfusion from someone and the life that i now live it is no longer about if you are not healed i'm not a man of god no your ego is gone it went with the training you started the ministry with ego so every time you want to pray for the sick your reputation is there and he said young man you can't do ministry that way it is not about the result it is about my glory it is painful to be approved of god this is why you stand and run your mouth over people that God approved. You will be surprised what happens to you. 
It's true you are a believer, but you will know that everyone is not the same. Let no man trouble me, he said, for I bear in my body. I'm speaking to men and women inside and outside here. You are in these defining moments and I must tell you what is happening in your life. Because if you are not careful, you will run around and meet people and they will say, no, um, it's because you don't have faith. No, I show you the way of power. Let me tell you this. Listen, listen. I don't claim to know everything about the faith life. I am just an effective member of the body. But I tell you this, when I teach people on how the anointing is made, and I teach people how men are made, it's an office. I don't teach you cunningly devised fables. I'm like a lecturer that has been teaching this for a long time. You ignore what I tell you is to your own peril. That which we have seen, that which we have heard, that which our hands have handled. The keys of nations will not be given to you just because you prayed. There is blood that must touch that altar. And not some, everything. It must be drained till you are empty. Your tears will not stop him. Not even your fears. You get to a point where all your fears happen to you. And there's nothing else to fear. You have come out of the realm. Not by escapism. I'm afraid. One of the ways boldness is given to you is what you fear is brought before you so that you no longer can fear god shows you your fear right before you you pray that he takes it away but you pass through it and there's no longer fear this is the making of men this is the threshing floor of naboth this is how the great are made in this kingdom apostle i'm calling to the ministry of kingdom finance I think all I need is just a seminar and some impartation. <laughs> you are joking. You are even the one who will need to die more than a preacher. Because mammon is a spirit that God even recognized. Abraham, take now thy son, thy only son whom thou lovest. Take him to a mountain. God, is this the price to be the father of nations? I'm not interested. What is that? I wait for a child for 25 years and you ask me to hand him over. Yes, sir. Take over. Take over. Take over. Take over. Take over. Over. Take over. Take over. Take over. Take over, take over, take over, take over, take over. I have come to the end of myself. Take over, take over. I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I have come to the end of myself. Hey, hey, take over. Listen, listen to me. I got to a point in my life where God so dealt with me, it was like there was no life again. That you get to a point where you don't know the name of your life or destiny again. No name. You are like Cain. And the more I kept moving like the wind, I didn't know that's how spiritual men are. Because he says the wind bloweth where it listeth. You cannot tell where it's going or where it's coming. So is one who is led by the Spirit of the Lord. I truly wanted the power of God in my life. And I prayed. I said, Lord, please give me power. I thought the answer would be a bed. 
that will land on my head and you say son from this day I have given you power power to open doors that no man can shut you are joking power to speak over nations no sir no sir no sir those keys are hidden in your scars you keep them there Oh, I apologize if you don't like what I'm teaching you tonight. But this meeting is for the great. Because I see that season coming again. It's like a cycle. And a season comes when there is a new recruitment. A new recruitment. It's always like that. And then the ones that have been recruited, God starts working with them. After some years, he says, now there is a, an opening again. That can scare me, that can scare me, cause I know I'm dead already. In my reason, in my seasons, I cry out, this is the end of me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I have come to the end of myself hallelujah. 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 listen please listen to me not every negative thing happening to you is demonic is of the devil N not every negative thing will answer to prayer there are certain things where it is the grace of God that will be sufficient for you. There are times in my life I fasted and fasted. I didn't know the difference between being full and being empty. This is our generation. We, we truly have this honor. Truly have this honor. Please don't just see every young man you are seeing and believe that just because they are young, it means that they were given certain things as a dash. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. There were nights when everyone would be sleeping. I would be on the roof of vet medicine in ABU. The roof of it in the night. From night till morning that roof seeing visions and revelations but staying there in that cold with mosquitoes just a little inconvenience and people begin to complain you are talking of giving some seed I never had the opportunity to spend my scholarship once once it was a sacrifice before it arrived. So when today someone says, Apostle, give me your phone, let me send you money. Please, there is a track record. Let's honor the pain of people. Let's honor the pain of people. Man of God, the anointing is for the taking. Grace is for the taking. The pride that we have just because of our one one or two two hours prayer <laughs> I will never forget times when I will lock myself for three days my eyes will not see the Sun I don't know whether it's day or night I don't know whether it's nine o'clock or ten o'clock no sleep with these eyes open praying from morning till night, morning till night, morning till night. Shaka -ta -ka -ta. Lord, expand this vessel. Expand this vessel. Let me be a, a conduit of your power. That was a prayer. Not for myself. Lord, for your glory. Let it please you that I will be used as a vessel. And one day God vowed a vow and said, my son, I give you my presence as a gift.
there is a threshing floor in the life of every believer please hear me I'm addressing those who are being attacked and those who are going through seasons they do not understand do not think that it is demonic please sit down and give me a few minutes and then we are going to pray tonight let me get back again to those who have been attacked and show you a few keys it applies to everybody but please write this down I remember praying years ago and I said Lord why is it that when I speak nothing happens I read the Bible and I saw in the life of Peter that while Peter yet spake these things the Holy Ghost fell on all they that had him not all they that believed in him if your ears could hear Peter the Holy Ghost will come to you I said Lord why don't I see this in my life not for pride and God let me know that everything in the kingdom is yours for the taking but there are dimensions not all things are possible at every level there are real dimensions number one the first key that I will give you to minister comforts tonight overflow one I'm seeing lights all over overflow one this is what I'm seeing lights I'm seeing an impartation lights 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 just like like thunder like lightning light I believe it's an impartation just overflow one just caught my attention in the name of Jesus Christ that which God has in store let it come upon you in Jesus name number one the first key that you need to survive these seasons whether a season of attack or a season of pruning and dealing and refining number one never lose your joy please never lose your joy in this kingdom joy is strength never never lose your joy Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4. Please write quickly. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Not always. Always as you go. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I repeat. Rejoice. Joy joy is of the holy ghost though joy is not just clownish laughter you don't have to laugh to be in joy lord i don't know the name of what you are doing but i rejoice i rejoice i rejoice i rejoice i rejoice <laughs> i rejoice <laughs> true joy will come in form of a melody on your lips a melody that does not make sense sometimes a melody that mocks your situation still sing it joy joy nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10b popular scripture but many of you don't know where it is in the bible nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10b it says for the joy of the lord is your strength that the joy of the Lord that means when you lack strength in this kingdom what you lack is joy in the physical world when you lack energy you are given food is that true in the realm of the spirit when you lack joy I mean when you lack strength what you are given to eat is joy sometimes God does not give you the solution he gives you joy 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 he said count it all joy count it all joy the shame yes sir the pain yes sir the no admission yes sir the disappointed meeting that I called people and I said sick people come and at the end nobody was healed 
and that you went back home and somebody sent a text and said next time be a serious man of God before you call us the Bible says, count it all joy it comes alive every time I hear your voice it comes alive every time I hear your voice there's a joy in my heart in spite of all the sorrows that surrounds me and this joy that I have only comes alive every time I hear your voice it comes it comes alive every time Can you watch your car on fire? Your 2.5 or 3.5 million. And you stand and say to God be the glory. Great things he has done. Can you watch your job? And you stand at the gate of your office. It was once yours. But now no longer yours. And say in it, oh God, I give you glory. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I be afraid? Can you stand before a corpse and you are looking at a dead body that you fasted for days to come back to life and you say, in spite of it, oh God, with the tears coming from my eyes, I still give you glory. I thought the dead body would come back to life, but now I have prayed. I give you glory. Never lose your joy. Let nothing in this life steal your joy. Not lack of money. Not lack of a child. Please listen to me. This gloominess we carry around is cheating us. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Make up your mind to rejoice in the Lord. Why are you rejoicing and crying? I'm crying because of the reality of my pain. But I rejoice because joy brings harvest. You will sow in tears but you will reap in joy, not with joy, in joy. If there is no joy, there is no harvest. Number two. What do you do in these seasons? Engage in strategic prayer. Listen, the seasons of attack in a believer's life or a season of pruning and making, they are seasons of deep spiritual emphasis. There are seasons of prayer and intercession. That's not the time to pray morning and evening. That's the time to pray anyhow and anytime. Because you are in a season. Your anchor will be your prayer. Hallelujah. Day and night you are praying. Lord, I don't know what is happening to my life, but I'm praying. You have your prayer time in the morning. You have your prayer time in the evening. But every time is prayer time. Every time is prayer time. An evil report. Your wife just lost her child. What are you doing? I am praying. Why? I'm in a season. Is any man afflicted? James chapter 5 and verse 13. Let him pray let him pray not let him discuss not let him grumble around not let him call god names and say i will backslide let him pray psalm 34 please from verse 4 to 7 and then the last part and we will pray psalm 34 i sought the lord and he heard me and delivered me from what? All my fears. Next verse. We are reading to four, to seven. They looked unto him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. Six. The poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of how many? All his troubles. Last verse. 
the angel of the Lord encampeth around them that fear him and delivereth them. Prayer is a powerful weapon in all seasons, but especially this season. Lord, what is happening around my life? My wife just got attacked. My son just got attacked. My job just got attacked. I am not understanding what is happening. I set myself like Daniel onto prayer. God grants you grace. You can add with fasting, add with fasting. This spiritual laziness of eating anyhow, anytime. Many believers now fast as a ceremony. Three days fasting, you carry it on your head as if, you, as if it's, it's 12 years fasting. If you love food more than your destiny, life will cheat you again and again. Food is okay, oh, but please let me tell you, mighty ones, you must learn to show food that your spirit man has grown above it. There are many of you here, you cannot remember. I may be wrong, I'm not saying you should do it. Please, I'm not saying you should do it. But as far as I'm concerned, there are spiritual levels that if you get to, a week should never pass that you did not fast. You are joking. You are joking. Not with what you are doing to hell. You are joking. Seven days. Ah, no. Himarama. 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 To the king who sits on the throne. Himarama to the king. Listen, let me tell you this. I will continue to teach you this secret. Real victory, real victory in prayer is gotten while men sleep. Real victory is not gotten shouting around just making noise. Real men of power contact power when men sleep. May God give you the grace to rise above sleep. I'm praying from the... May God give you the grace to not allow sleep cheat you. That God can wake you up in the night. No light off the light you are praying don't allow distractions you are praying the next thing you see one of your trousers and it's enough to distract off the light you can use your phone light you are in the night alone and watch what happens you are nobody seeing what you are doing but there is a register every day you are signing it is the day you get to the stage to preach. That's when God will not disappoint you. You don't come on stage and talk nonsense. Lion of the tribe of Judah, Rose of Sharon, Lily of the Valley, Rose of this and that and that. God is not a scammer. He's not a magician. No track record in the secret place. You will flatter yourself to nothing in, it, in the open. Please learn to pray in the night. Learn to pray in the night. Learn to pray in the night. Receive grace to dedicate night times and pray. God didn't give you a house just to keep things. Turn everywhere to a prayer altar. Turn your toilet to a prayer altar. Turn your living room to a prayer altar. When everyone has gone off the television, don't pray watching a film. Even if it's a Christian movie, you are not praying. Shut it down. Lord, this is me and you here. I don't know what is happening to my life. 
a time will come you feel like just leaning get up and say Satan you are a liar I'm going far a time will come your tongues begin to change what you are saying it will never be what you started with you, are, you, you have entered a level in the spirit tongues are languages and there are levels of power contact groanings that cannot be uttered you get to a point in the spirit where you begin to pray there are times that only one word one phrase will come out of your mouth for minutes pray it you are receiving power Prayer is not something you do in a group so that people will see you and think you're a prayer warrior. Don't joke with your destiny like that. Don't joke with your destiny like that. The Bible says to enter and shut the door behind you. Shut the door behind you and pray to your father who is in secret. You don't need to have a prayer point. You don't need to have a prayer point. Just stay there and begin to pray. Sekas kaparakatos, embrekete keleka takatos, sikos kamanakata. And while you are praying, your flesh is weak, but your spirit is willing. Listen, can I tell you this? There is a level of fire you bring on any attack in your life. It must give way. It must give way. Fire is an emblem of the spirit. It's one of the emblems of revival. It's one of the emblems that show that the spirit is in a place. Fire does not only refine. Fire is for judgment. There are times you need to stay like a priest upon the watch. My brother and my sister, if you pray from your heart, some things will shift. You will wake up in the morning and know I shifted this through prayer. There are attacks that only prayer can challenge. Pray for me, pray for me is wonderful. But you must become the priest of your destiny. Can someone just blast in tongues for just one or two minutes? Salamakata. Senakandas kama hasabash. Rakata pakato sopokoto seketelekata. Emprata seneketo shanikata. Sasete shanahas kabaratos. Unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Lord, I'm in a season of my life. I cannot afford to be lazy. I'm in a season of my life. I cannot allow my prayer life go down. It's too risky. Not for this season. Not for this season. This is the wrongest time to be prayerless. This is the wrongest time to be prayerless. Oh, take away slumber from my eyes. Take away slumber, oh God. There are scores to settle in the realm of the spirit. There are things to shift in the realm of the spirit. There are things to align in the realm of the spirit. I need to legislate spiritual realities. While men slept, while men slept, the enemy came and saw tears. Pray. Pray. Outside, pray. You're the king who sits 
upon the white horse To the king Yes upon the white Shelabakata Rekotosia Nimarama 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 To the king who sits on the throne Nimarama to the king who sits on the moon. Hey, Barata Katosha Branda Katala Katosh. Akata Brakatoska Nekata Brasana Kata. Karu se sene ketosha la toske mahasa. Woe to them who are at ease in Zion. Woe to them who are at ease in Zion. To the king who sits upon the white horse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're praying. Psalm 125. Prayer gives you stamina to pass through seasons. Jesus prayed, otherwise, you would have given up. He said, Peter, Satan desired to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you are converted, use the same strategy to strengthen, strengthen. Pray, I say, strengthener. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abided forever. Next verse. As the mountains are around Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth even forever. Next verse. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous lest the righteous put his hands in iniquity. Next verse. Do good, O Lord, unto those that be good and to them that are upright in their hearts. We are reading till the last verse. As for such as turn aside in their crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity. But peace upon Joshua Selman. Prayer gives you stability. In the next two, three minutes, you are going to pray and say, Lord, let this prayer stabilize me. I shouldn't be shaking over everything. I should be able to laugh at certain storms and say, Jesus is Lord. Lift your voice and pray. Stability, power, stamina. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. Stability, O oh God. Stability, O oh God. The Bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle, your strength is small. Your strength is small. Give me capacity, endurance, stamina. The grace to pass through for the sake of my family. The grace to pass through for the sake of my generation. The grace to pass through for the sake of my, my loved ones. Be strong, be strong, be strong. Be strong in the Lord. Don't be weak. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Be strong in the Lord. 
Koinonia, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Don't entertain weakness. Be strong in the Lord. You are not the weak ones. You are strong. Hallelujah. The third key I will give you tonight. Number one, never lose your joy. Number two, engage in strategic prayer and intercession. Number three, prophesy. The power of the spoken word. There is no greater time in your life to engage the creative power of God's word than when things just go haywire. The power of the spoken word. The power of the spoken word. Numbers chapter 14 and verse 28. Numbers chapter 14 and verse 28. Numbers 14 Say unto them As truly as I live saith the Lord As ye have spoken in my ears So will I do unto you There are times that you don't just pray You pray till the spirit of prophecy comes on you When it does come You speak He said prophesy speak to the dry bones prophesy all dry bones hear ye the word of the lord said prophesy there are times you need to prophesy there are times you need to speak psalms 138 and verse 8 very powerful scripture psalms 138 and verse 8 please give it to us quickly we're going to pray the Lord will perfect that which concerned me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of my own hands. You lift it in prayer. I prophesy and I declare. The Lord is perfecting everything concerning me. I declare that I come out victorious. The Bible declares that goodness and mercy follow me. You don't just cry and say, hey, yeah, so is this how my life is going to be? This is what I've become now. No, sir. Nothing moves till you prophesy. I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a sound. You see, that's why it is important for a believer to be full of God's word. If you are scripture bankrupt, you will not know what to say. Prophecy is not just when God reveals something like word of knowledge. You can take the word of God and begin to create possibilities. It's important to know the word. It's important to know the word. When it looks like things around you are not working, you go to Psalm 3. Many are they that rise up against me. Many are they which say, where is your God? He says, but thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. You are my glory, the lifter up of my head. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth. It's unfortunate for believers who don't know the word. You must trust God for grace to sit down and gather relevant scriptures that address the issue of concern and stand up like the priest that you are put those words in the lips of faith like Kenyon would say and begin to release them with true supernatural power the Lord is my light and salvation the Lord is my light and salvation I reject confusion in my life I hear a voice from behind saying this is the way walk in it this is how to pray is someone ready to pray listen to me there are many of us who have gotten to the stage in our seasons where it is our prophecy that will bring the morning if you don't prophesy nothing will happen is someone ready to pray
if you don't know what to say go and hold the hands of someone who knows what to say and agree with them lift your voice and begin to speak there has to be a scripture that you know it shall keep them in perfect peace whose minds are stayed towards him many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord delivered him from them all from them all from them all and I will restore the years that the canker worm has eaten the palmer worm the caterpillar it will give them beauty for ashes joy for the spirit of mourning that they might be called the oaks of righteousness the planting of the Lord and he shall be glorified behold I do a new thing shall ye not know it I make a way even in the wilderness streams in the desert the Lord shall perfect all that concerns me all the days of my appointed time I wait till my change comes when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion they were like them that dream so said they among the hidden the Lord had done great things for us he said the Lord has done great things for us whereof we are glad turn again our captivity like the streams of the Negev they that sow in tears shall reap in joy I am the head and not the tail above and not beneath I shall lay up gold as dust even the gold of Ophir. Gentiles come to my light. They are kings even to the brightness of my rising. For my shame I receive double. But my head shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn and I shall be anointed with fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil. Blessed in my going out, blessed in my coming in, blessed is the work of my hands, my kneading trough in the name of Jesus Christ. Blessed is a man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. My seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in my house, and my righteousness endures forever. Pray. Pray. You are not just speaking, you are creating. Declare thou that ye might test be justified. For by your words you are justified. And by your words you are condemned. You are bringing before God your strong reasons. Above only, above only, above only, above only, in the name of Jesus, above only, above only, a sign and a wonder, a testament of the grace of God, a testament of the favor of God, a testament of the hand of God, a testament of the mercy of God. Palabaroto segetele mahasabadia.
Though weeping endures for a night, joy comes with the morning. Prophesy joy in the morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Genesis chapter 32, Genesis chapter 32, the Bible says, Jacob wrestled with God and he said, leave me for the day breaketh. He says, I will not let you go unless, listen, unless you bless me. Here's how God blessed him. What is your name? What is your identity? What have people known you with? I'm about to change it. That's how I bless you. If I blessed you truly, it means something they used to say about you. A proverb should no longer be heard. What is your name? And he said, Jacob, a cheat and a supplanter. He said, thou shalt no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. Why? For as a prince, you have had power with God and prevailed. We are going to pray. Father, change my name. In this season, listen. Change my name means change my experience. Change my name means change the proverb. Let this proverb not be used about me again. That God cannot show him mercy. That God cannot lift my family. Let this proverb change. Like father, like son. No, sir. Open your mouth and cry change my name change my story and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren Jabez the mother called him Jabez named him in sorrow but Jabez was angry he said oh that thou wouldest bless me enlarge my coast is someone praying Lord change my financial name change my ministerial name change my marital name change my destiny name out of the abundance of your mercy by the encounter I've had with you change my name change my story change my name Give me a testimony. Shut the mouths of the wicked. Prove once again that you are God and that by yourself. Please pray. God answers prayers. Give me a new name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Next prayer point. The Bible says he touched the hollow of his thigh and it became twisted. Lord, may I never depend on my strength. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. And lean not on your own understanding. It says, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. The next verse says, Do not be wise in your own understanding, but fear the Lord and turn away from evil. You are going to pray. Lord, I've trusted my certificate. I've trusted my connection. I've trusted my beauty. I've trusted my spirituality. But tonight I take my eyes away from all of this. As advantageous as they are, they looked unto him. And their faces were lightened. I look to you and to you alone. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. We are praying. I take my eyes away from man. It is true that my blessings come through men. But my eyes are fixed on you. Is someone praying?
We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh, Yahweh. Like the brazen serpent that Moses made, he said, whoever looks to that serpent, the real one will not strike at him. Vain is anything that you put your strength on. So Jacob, I see you stable without me. I touch your point of stability so that you will be ever dependent on me. The last prayer point. He said he blessed him and the sun arose. Until then it was night. The war happened in the night. The weeping happened in the night. But then he says the sun arose and Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, the face of God. He says for I have seen God face to face. When Moses saw the face of God, he returned back with a testimony. Is someone ready to pray? Lord, let the sun arise. It is true that weeping endures for a night, but I believe I'm standing at the dawn of my morning. Lift your voice and prophesy. Let my sun arise. Sun arise. Financial sun arise ministerial son arise the encounter is over the lessons have been learned the impartations have been received therefore night time be turned today night time be turned today Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep standing. We're rounding up. Let me tell you three things that come into your life when you break through with God. Number one, strange dimensions of favor. There is, a, there is a, an unusual degree of favor. It's God's signature. He writes it upon your life that the training for this phase has come to an end. You have been approved. He uses favor. Dimensions of doors you never dreamt opening. I can tell you this happens. It doesn't matter how the night is. That when your day breaks, you will see favor that will bring you to your knees. When I talk of favor, I'm not talking money. I'm talking of the hearts of kings and nobles. Money is very small. God will take the hearts of kings and nobles and give you. It will be like a charm. You will call on a man and nations will respond. You have become Beulah and Hephzibah. The delight. Number two. 
genuine, authentic spiritual power. Genuine spiritual power. Not trial and error. Not like God will come. Not like God will move. Something solid upon you. Provable. Genuine spiritual power. You speak the purposes of God to men's lives and you will shift lives overnight. Power. 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 Number three. The third thing that happens to you when you stand with God is that God multiplies both your spiritual and your physical influence he increases the reach of the grace he has put upon your life yes sir yes sir every man is limited by the jurisdiction a portion for his grace to function there are men who can stand from anywhere and speak over nigeria it doesn't matter the grace given to them and the expansion they have attained unto in the spirit covers that sphere. Elijah stood in one place and spoke over an entire land. There were times when Jesus had to leave one land to enter another land to pray for a person. What was the reward of the five, two and one talent? Greater territory, greater influence in the spirit. When kings conquered certain lands, they had increased territory. America is called America today because it's the unity of many states. One American state can be three times Nigeria. One state. Are we together now? Yes. It's why it's called United States of America. In Nigeria, you can pass through a state in 30 minutes. And there are times in the states you will fly for hours from one state to the other. There is no state that is more than one hour, ten minutes. My Duguri to Lagos is the farthest distance. One hour, ten minutes exactly you are there. But you will fly for hours. That is the reason why whoever sits as the president of that territory must be respected by every devil whether they like it or not it is the reason why the american president is the number one president because there are many in one state is the destiny of many nations the per capita income of just one state will swallow up many african countries so when god expands your sphere dimensions where your grace would not reach now you can speak from one place and they can hear from home before you had to go home for them to hear but now god has expanded your influence and they say won't you come again you say no problem he has upgraded the grace for i am also a man under authority right from where i am i can say to one come and he cometh go and he goeth it's like a ranking in the spirit. One of my old secondary school classmates, my father got to meet with him recently and now he's a major in the army. I think at the threshold of the next rank. What's the next rank? After, after major. Lieutenant Colonel, yes. I think soon that's what they are going to give him. He used to be a fearful, chicken-like young guy. I remember when they take us from Joss to go to our school, he would start crying even before we go out of Joss. I never cried once to leave home. It was a delight and a pleasure to get out. That guy was so girlish and feminine. I wondered, but that guy today is a major. Sometimes he would stand and do some things, you know, he could see a roach, cockroach, and you know how ladies would jump. But today he can tell me, kneel down, hands up, you civilian, except for the fact that.
when I send thee, lackest thou anything? Can we spend two minutes to pray? Let's pray the prayer of Jabez. Enlarge my territory. Please lift your voice and pray. Enlarge me, O God. Take away the spirit of smallness from my life. It doesn't give you glory that I remain small. Not after an encounter with you. Not after seasons, defining moments with you. Pray the prayer of Jabez. Oh, that thou wouldest bless me. That thou wouldest expand, enlarge my territory. Pray for koinonia. Pray for your business. Lord, enlarge my territory. He said, where we meet with you is too straight. Let us move beyond the Jordan. Please pray. God is hearing you. You are not wasting your time. It has been said, no one rose beyond certain levels in your family. But can you pray the prayer of Jabez? Expand my territory, O oh God. I will go where the fathers have not gone. I will eat the milk and the wine of Canaan. I will not die in the wilderness. He did not bring me from Egypt to leave me in the wilderness. There is a land that flows with milk and honey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to pray. You don't have to come out. But I want to pray specially for people in this place tonight. You just sense in your life that there seems to be a fierce attack on your life. This is not just a dealing with God. This one you know is demonic. It's like all hell breaking loose over you, over your family, over your spiritual life, over whatever it is, your business. I want to pray for you and I want you to believe. It is for this cause that the Lord says to not neglect the gathering of the brethren because it's an opportunity for a supply of his power. Even when your seasons come to the end, there has to be a man. He said, destroy it not for there is a blessing in it. I want to pray for such people. Suddenly your prayer life just went down. You come fast from 6 to 6. By 11 you are almost collapsing. You can't even breathe. It's an attack. As a man of God, you found out that it looks like you opened the Bible and your page is empty. You are not seeing anything again. Every verse looks confusing. Every. Something is wrong. Strange attack on your church. Members are suddenly leaving. Everybody is suddenly hating you. People you have labored to raise in the gospel are now turning against you. It's an attack. You used to prophesy correctly. But now you just found out that you entered a season of nonsense. Everything you say is not correct. Word of knowledge, not correct. Your prophecy, not correct. It's an attack. It doesn't mean you are wrong. It means the devil is attacking your credibility. So that you will no longer be trusted. Finances. You are a hard-working, diligent person all of a sudden it looked like holes came in your pocket all doors just closed no destiny help again even those who promised to help you it's as if something turned their backs against you it's an attack my brothers and my sisters you need to pray 
all of a sudden your children started becoming something else people you have labored and trained they now no longer listen to you you say a they say b you say keep quiet they tell you to keep quiet something is wrong strange devilish dreams nightmares you can't dare lie down on your bed to sleep here they come pressing you molesting you attacking you it will take the grace of god to struggle yourself to wake up it's an attack what of reports from home you are enjoying the glory of god just about to take a nice step they just call you they pay you some areas that you are trusting god to just use and buy a small land and you hear an attack that someone needs chemotherapy or, or whatever it is and they need to spend 35 to 100,000 every week and it is you they are depending on say devora say it again say devora i said devora i was talking to some gentlemen and i said guys when do you want to get married all of them said various dates and all of that and i said convince me that your home will not be a disaster they made a lot of very intelligent statements okay jesus they've handed over the order hand over the family to jesus christ which is good right which is good but not all okay they'll do something get a job good but not all number three don't forget that in family life you are not living with animals you are living with human beings who have a will how many of you have roommates that you were praying that last session should end christians you love god you were so happy when you finished the last exam the roommate i'm finally going say, I'm, I'm, i wish you a merry christmas you've started wishing christmas from second of december i wish you a merry christmas in other words get out of my room and my life all of them all the doors just leave so if you do not understand the principles of human relations what convinces you that because you saw a beautiful girl or a beauty or a handsome guy i like the guy what of you what do you think ah, whether you like the lady or you like the guy sooner or later see during relationship a lot happens because it's just two of you when you get married relatives come in born again or not born again are you seeing now transition so many other factors that you are not aware of coming you get married to the man and all of a sudden the man is yawning and pouring saliva and you are saying my jesus christ my prince charming i turned down 30 guys for this gentleman and what is this the first shocker welcome to the reality of transitions you may not have the opportunity to see that right so the, the trouble is not, I'm not, I don't have a problem with your success at this level because you have mastered the level. But when you transit, you will not use the old formula for the new level. Are you getting me? So I want to share with you that you must know how to transit with life. Otherwise, you will be shocked. As a pastor, the way you pastor a church of 12 members, 14 members, is very different when 50 members come out of those 50 there's at least four or five wicked people they have they've been your 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 leadership style must be able to accommodate the mixed multitude that is coming that means the way you do ministry for 12 people i love them i trust them they are all they will die for me 50 people will not die for you i guarantee you right when 100 people come your leadership style and your understanding must change when a crowd comes, everything must change. Same thing. When you get a job, as a JJC, they just gave you a job, there is an approach. The moment they promote you, certain things are expected. Right? As a senior staff, there are some things you do that your corporation or whatever will not be able to take from you. Are you getting what I'm saying? When God began to transit Moses in the anointing, it was simple disobedience of striking a rock instead of speaking to it that stopped moses from entering the promised land to you it may look like that is that was too hard a punishment but compared to what standard are you getting me 
Was it not Aaron and Miriam that said certain things and they were punished severely? Look at Zechariah, right? Zechariah said uh, this and that and that. He insulted Gabriel and they shut his mouth. The same Mary asked questions. How shall these things be? And the angel, they rebuke her. He took time to explain because he was dealing with people at two different levels. Are you following what I'm saying? Family life. You can make or ruin the future of yourself and the people God will bring under your care if you do not understand the principles of family life. Number four, very quickly, your career or your professional life, you must pay attention to it or generally speaking, your assignment. You can pray in tongues. You can have a good home. If you're a liability in your workplace, you're a liability in your office, you're a liability in your corporation, they will check you out no matter what kind of tongues you are praying. Are you getting my point? So you must focus on the area of your career, the area of your professional life. Praise the Lord. And then your assignment, generally speaking. And the last area is the area of relationships and associations. Five areas you must pay attention as you transit even in this season. What's number one? What's number two? What's number three? What's number four? Number five. Listen, if you pay attention to all these areas and you succeed in them, you will become a balanced person. Anointed, wealthy, right? Blessed with the gift of associations, you can impact people, you can live a legacy. This is what God wants for us. And my job is to help us. I don't want an imbalance where we are anointed, we are casting out devils, but then we are tied down financially. Or we are succeeding financially, but we are on our way to hell. Right? Or our families and marriages are failing. Listen, any pastor, any man of God that does not pay attention to these areas will have a chaos in his family. That's why God can never trust certain ministries with certain levels of people. Because we must sustain the ability to balance it. What good is it? Listen to me. If stand up Zoe and Ken. Assuming both of them are husband and wife. Huh? Husband, wife. How will you love a crowd of tongue-talking people who taught themselves in the morning at home? Wife comes wearing glasses because the man really injured her eyes that morning. And they came and you are full of all kinds of people. And you believe that you are rising but there's all kinds of fight happening everywhere. And you say, turn to your neighbor and you find out that people are not turning to their wives. They are turning to some other people. Right? A husband comes, he sits in front, his wife is down there, the children are somewhere there. They form a triangle in the church because they don't want to see any, they don't want to even come near themselves. You are a failed leader. When that happens, bless you, please sit down. Now, for some of us, like I said, some of the things that I'm teaching may not seem to make all the sense for us. Why? Because of the level that we are in life. I will be touching on some things that will challenge you. But the shock is that transitions are instant. That means you must prepare for a phase before you get there. You don't prepare when you get there because transitions are instant. One moment you write your final exam and you wake up to find out you're a graduate. Whether you believe it or not, you are. You dance and rejoice, but then a transition has occurred. Praise the Lord. You'll be arguing, I want to marry. Oh God, my husband must come. In the name of Jesus Christ, I, I smoke him out of everywhere he is. He must come to me. All kinds of prayers, we apply different skills to, to force breakthroughs into our lives. Now the man comes and before you know it, you have become a wife. And you check and find out that it's six months. You are tired of cooking. Oh God, what is this? You did not brace up for the transition. You were more excited about the motions. You were more excited about living singleness than being a wife. You were more excited about wearing a ring than sustaining a good family. Two months into your wedding, you are tired. That's why you see people slap one another and they are tired. Are you doing no? Are you doing no? Well, let's go. There must be an understanding. And then, 
there are many Christians, and some of you who work, and I'm, I'm sure our daddy prof here will testify, and many other people. Many Christians fail, fail in their professional lives. Is that true? They are the ones they downsize. They are the ones they sack. They are the ones who are ineffective. They are the ones who are always doing the wrong things. You give them a paper to present, they make a, a, a mess of it because they don't prepare. They are waiting for the Holy Ghost to prepare the paper and they come up, she get da, 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 da. is it your turn? Yes. And they come and make a mess of nonsense. And then we get angry. One of the worst problems of Africa is the belief that our problems are entirely demonic. It's one of the worst things that has happened to the continent of Africa. An easy explanation to failure. Praise the Lord. So your boss looks at you and queries you. And you say, while he was talking, I saw a spirit behind him. As if what he was saying was a lie. You have been ineffective. They now call you in a board meeting and say, Mr. Man, we have all seen what you have done. We want to promote you, but it doesn't look like you have been effective. Praise the Lord. Very important. How many Christians have given God an opportunity to bless them and increase them? How many Christians are CEOs of multi-million and multi-billion dollar corporations? Very few. Because many Christians embrace an average life and we are happy about it. It's God speaking to us. And we keep talking and say they made an unbeliever the CEO. You will stand side by side with that person and you will not be able to deliver in, in even if the standards were lowered. Praise the Lord. Am I challenging us? How many Christian students pass WAEC? Let's be very sincere. How many Christian students pass JAM? People play around and then two days to the exam, they are just smiling around. How many Christian young people get employed one or two years after graduation? Because the biggest problem with Africa is the transfer of blames to demons. You can't sue demons to court. You can't summon them before a judge. So we, we do not concentrate on our assignments and on our, our professional lives. How many men of God are able to deliver? They call and say, Lord, bring a crowd. They, they understand nothing about leadership principles. They think all there is is the ability to lay hands. No, sir. No, sir. Organizational skills, zero. Leadership skills, zero. Communication skills, zero. Right? Crisis management skills, zero. And now you want God to give you a crowd. You want to go on air. Is God speaking to us? And then our relationships and associations. People skills. If you fail in these five areas in life, then you are truly a failure. I don't care whether you got first class in school. If your spiritual life is dead and all other areas are dead, I guarantee you life will whip you in a way that you will be shocked. And I want us to be successful. Status is changing. It's no more decline. You're on your way to better death. It's not magical. It's a process. Status is changing. It's no more decline. Please write very quickly why many people are failures or mediocres in life. Write why the reasons, reasons why many people, especially young people, end up being failures and mediocres in life. There is a reason, there is a reason why many people end up being failures. They go to school, they give their best, they graduate, they do everything and then they step out of life with a lot of expectancy. Just like there are some of us seated here right now. We are angry at life because what they told you is not what you are seeing. I don't have a job. There's nothing happening. Every lady I go to, I want to marry you, she says, I'm sorry. Why are you sorry? 
Why are you sorry? Am I dead? Am I not alive? He said, you are living, but it's like you are dead. Number one, and this is where I want to get our attention now. Gentlemen, pay attention. No pinching around. Be very serious. Number one is mindsets. The first reason why people become failures or mediocres in life is their mindset. Everybody say mindset. Lack of mental transition. Lack of mental transition. They are growing older, but their minds are not transiting with the new seasons. To understand the demands, the responsibilities, lack of mental transition. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 11 said, When I was a child, spoke like a child, understood like a child, and he said, I thought like a child. But then he said something, he said, Now that I am a man, what happened? He said, I lay aside. I throw away childish things. So many of us have become men and women, but we have still embraced the mindset that you had when you were 11 years old. Is that true? So although you are married, you are finding out that you are a big child. There is a lot of childishness happening. In your office, you are seeing childishness. That inability to transit mentally, to match the transition that is happening in your life. Mindsets. And there are three aspects we'll deal with under mindset. Number one is dependency mentality. Dependency mentality. Oh, God is speaking to us. If you pay attention to what I'm saying, the rain will fall on you truly. Dependency mentality. Everyone say it. One more time. Dependency mentality because... Although it is scriptural, can I have one gentleman? Come, my brother. If this guy is my son, watch this. If this guy is my son, I have a scriptural injunction, right? As a father to take care of him. Is that true? To take care of him, to make sure that he eats well, make sure he loves God and all the responsibilities. But as the transition begins to occur in his life, this child is now becoming an adult. Is that true? That means that there must be a transition. But by the time this gentleman is 30 years, 25 years, and he's still having a dependency mentality. That's why we have so many men. They are married, but their mothers and fathers tell them everything to do. Because the they transition happened, but in their minds, they didn't transit. Are you getting what I'm saying? Mommy, what do I cook for him today? He said, what did you cook yesterday? He said, say, Mom. He oh, yeah, try Gary today. See that? So, that inability to stand, to an extent, brothers and sisters, there are many people who get married and they create a room for them in their parents' house. I'm not talking of a large compound with many houses because the man cannot do anything. Mommy prepares a room for him. He now carries his wife. Later on, the wife is pregnant. She gives birth. And they are all here. It's a terrible thing. It's a curse. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, dependency mentality. They were giving you pocket money. Maybe 5,000, 10,000 per month. And now you graduate. And five years after graduation, you start frowning at your father. He doesn't understand why the bad look has happened. Because... He expected that you would have realized. They gave you scholarship. You were blowing it. Buying books. Buying, uh, buying boots. Buying trainers. Buying everything. After all, my father, he gave birth to me. Right? And now you are finished and your father says, um, I think you should be considering moving. Say, moving to where? Is it not you who is supposed to build a house for me? The Bible says this and that and that and that. Shame on many young people because although they are old, we are quick to look for women but very slow to transit. You see a lady, ah, I like this lady. And where are you? What are your plans? That transition, dependency mentality. Hallelujah. To an extent that you see a young man, some of you are looking at me as I'm talking to you now. You are in this category. You are seated and you get up shamefully very shamefully and you call your old parents from their pension and you say 
Popsy, yeah. Can you transfer something to me? And he says, okay, things are not going on. I say, it's, it's always like that. You're always, and you caught the call, and you are raking, and your mediocre friends are massaging. He said, calm down. Please calm down. Calm down. You know, old people with this, their thing. And your mother is crying on phone at home and say, my son, it's not like I don't love you. What is all that? Eh? It's not this and that and that and that. I beg Jare, send me some money. And then they go and borrow money. And as old as you are, they send money. You use 10,000 to buy cake and celebrate 30 years. And it doesn't occur to you that there is a transition. Is God speaking to us tonight? Oh, you must grow in the name of Jesus Christ. You may not like me now, but I will come to your homes and you will thank me for it. See, let me tell you, the person who loves you is the person who tells you the truth. It may challenge you, but it will make you a better person. Some of us, we have this over-dependence on everybody. Your father's first responsibility to, is to his wife, not you. To his wife, not you. Hallelujah. To an extent that there are many people who are, I know people who are working, but still want their parents to give them money. They are working, collecting salary, 100,000. They collect the salary and keep and say, Mommy, how far? Dependency mentality. You become a parasite to everybody. There are people who, everywhere you go, when they see you, you are tired. You call people, they say, well, he's not around. And he's the person you are looking for who is talking. He picks the phone and says, please, John is not around. He says, ah, are you not John? He says, ah, he's not around. He calls the call because there is a parasite mentality. Right? As a young man, you don't, learn, you don't want to learn how to cook and you don't want to be rich. A paradox. You want to go to the restaurant every time. And then you want to remain broke. If there's nothing there, learn how to cook. If you can't cook anything, learn rice, beans, swallow. It's a good start. It's a good start. Is God speaking to us, please? Take what I'm saying very seriously. Because if you don't, sooner or later, you will see that it will whip you seriously. I counsel a lot of people. And when couples come, their number one problem is the inability. As I hear them speak, I still see children speaking. Because there is that, it has happened in church. But mentally, there is that dependency mentality. So the man looks at his wife and says, mommy. She looks at the husband and says, daddy. And then there is a mommy-daddy fight going on. Because everybody is depending on who. Why didn't you wake me? I need to be at the office by 7.30. Why didn't you wake me? Oh, guy, you are married. Your mother woke you when you were going to JS1. Five o'clock. That old woman will get up and put water for you and do everything and iron your clothes. You are married. To an extent that some of us are pests to our roommates, office mates. You never cook. You don't ever say anything about cooking. Bros, you don't do just step into people's rooms and when they see you coming they say lock the door lock the door this parasite is coming your life is not supposed to be that way hey, hey look hold on please i hope as we are laughing we are listening your life is not supposed to be like that a parasitic life everybody runs away from you because you have a dependency mentality you never have the opportunity to manage situations you have headache you are running around expecting everybody to say you you see that and and the ugly part is when it happens for men it makes it's okay if it happens for women but a matured man and another matured man oh boy sorry oh you have headache what is that praise the lord the guy is not feeling fine who should tell you to get up and go to a clinic it's not like there's no money we are used to dependency mentality. Mommy, where are you? Come and take me to the hospital. You are 30 years. Dependency mentality. So that's what happens. When that kind of man gets married, his children can be sick and he will look at them like that because he's not used to taking responsibilities. 
dependence no food at home eh? so what no food that's it now they sack a man from work 10 years later he has not gotten another job and he doesn't care he said what happened to me? you know the way nigeria railway corporation that time we we're working railway i was working in nitel i was working in this and he's qualified the cvs are there ah, you hear me this night bless you please mindsets dependency mentality you must get out of it do make up your mind not to be a pest and a parasite to anybody say i am a blessing not a parasite say it i am a blessing not a parasite when you were small when you visit your uncle once you are going they they carry smarties and cornflakes and milk and bone bitter. Now you go and meet them. They are old and you see that. You say, Uncle, I'm going. No, he said, May the Lord bless you. I had you. You are a graduate. Now, where did you even serve? I served in Ondo. And immediately you finish. They say, Ah, so they gave you all those 20,000 allowances. Yeah, those things they gave us. And now you finish and you are eyeing your uncle. You are angry because you are expecting him to gather everything and give you. See, I'm not blaming you. I'm challenging it out of you. It does not live by default. You force it to go out. That mentality will never live because you are growing older. I'm telling you, you must make a conscious effort. I made up my mind that the last money I would ever collect from my father was when I was in 100 level. And that was it. I took responsibility over my life. There's no job. Why? In Nigeria now, all this federal government is not true. It's not true. What effort have you made? Dependency mentality. So you see students practice this. You give them assignments, they never do it. Right? They are always waiting for a night to submission. Have you seen people like that? And then they come at me, they say, how far? You know, we are fellow koinonia people. So what? They now bring it, you copy that dependency mentality is the root of malpractice. Because you are in the exam hall and you never believe. Please, let's be sincere. How many WIAC results in Nigeria are genuine? That the people, I'm not condemning. Are you getting my point? How many? I, I never knew they used to do Expo in Jam, but now there's nothing that doesn't happen. All kinds of skills. Expo here, shoes, any kind. You, we have the mindset to be able to innovate ways of cheating. Something is wrong. Hallelujah. Dependency mentality. So, people pair themselves when they are going to write exams. Please come and sit down. If you don't know, I help you. If I don't know, you help me. Question one, you don't know. Two, you don't know. Three, you don't know. The bonus, you don't know. You don't know anything there because a dependency mentality. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are many people who are angry with their parents right now. They may have failed in not being able to leave a possession for you. But let me tell you, if you sit down there, it's the same way your children will be angry with you. And say, did you have to marry? That's what your child will ask you one day. See, was it by force? Then you will flog him. Because that's exactly what happened to you when you asked that question. The second mentality on that mindset is the false comfort that comes with generalizing failure. The second mentality on that mindset, we're still talking about one, let's hurry up, is the false comfort, false, F-A-L-S-E, the false comfort that comes with generalizing failure. There are many people who become failures in life because they have found a way of generalizing failure. You know, the moment you generalize failure, have you seen people who fail and you ask them why? They say, ah, didn't you hear that there was mass failure? So they now exit themselves and say, no, it's not unique to me. Oga, you've been earning 200,000. After five years, you don't have a plot of land. Say, are you, are you, are you, you don't know what is happening in Nigeria? There is a mindset that spreads failure so that you nicely come out of it. Are you getting what I'm saying? 
but you've not paid the school fees of two of your children. You are a worker. You say, eh, you know now, the way this whole thing is, eh, is this just us? It's not happening in your office. We, we generalize. There is a consolation that comes when you tell people, especially Nigerians, that you are not the only one who failed. Is that true? There are many people like that. So a man of God is falling sick recurrently. Instead of him to go back to the world and find out why am I not eating, he says, look, uh, you see, we are humans. So you spread the failure and it excuses your unique wrong. Are you getting what I'm saying? Is, is God speaking to us? So every time you fail, you look for somebody who failed just like you to derive comfort rather than settling down to say no no i must have done something wrong what did i do wrong what steps can i make to fire back praise the lord that's the reason why we love witchcraft in africa because it's a general thing so when they come and say your whole family now nah, i'm not of course you know we pray next week is miracle service right there's a place to deal with that but let me tell you it's not everything in our lives that is tied to demons stop generalizing failure there is there is what you can know that will exempt you hallelujah say i refuse to generalize failure my bible says when men say there is a casting down what will be your testimony yes see for as long as as you find pleasure in generalizing failure, you will never be great. There are pastors who will never rise to the challenge for their ministry to experience another level. General failure. They say, you know, there's crisis in the north. Yes, it's true that there's crisis in the north. But are you not seeing God doing exploits in the midst of it? You see, when you generalize failure, it makes you comfortable. Because you are now saying that it's not anything wrong that I did. It's, it's, it's something that affected all of us. Are you getting what I'm saying? I learned early in life to take responsibility for my failures. Why didn't you come? Why did you come late to come and decorate this thing? Am I the only one? Did you meet any other person? We all came late. You see, that's it. That's the point. Praise the Lord. Ha, all of you in your family are not married. Yes, we are all like that. You are now happy. In spite of the unique role you play, your role of carelessness and shouting at every man, that has nothing to do with deliverance. Your own lack of understanding of submission, you just rubbed it in the whole picture and said, we are, we, are, we, are all, we are all, there's no marriage coming. It's like that. This is our family, sir. That's why you find out that after prayers, after healing, after deliverance, some people's situation never changes because the factor they've been trying to hide and generalize it is still there. The comfort that comes with generalizing failure. Number three, let me hurry up. The third mindset is an entitlement mentality. Similar to what we call dependency mentality. An entitlement mentality is, is for me, in my opinion, this is the most poisonous of all mentalities because entitlement mentality is the belief that someone owes you something in life. Someone owes you making your success happen. Someone owes you making your life. Are you getting my point? That, that mentality, the government owes me right my father is supposed to give me money i'm getting married my father should build a house for me buy a car it's my right that that entitlement mentality is a dangerous mentality the belief that someone else is responsible for your well-being the belief that somebody else is entirely responsible for your well-being it's an entitlement mentality we blame parents for our failures we blame the government for our failures we blame a lot of external factors 
every time we are mentioning the things that make us fail we never talk about ourselves we never say our contribution to the equation hallelujah um elijah why did you slap shay i slapped her because she has been playing with my intelligence and this other guy who is supposed to talk didn't talk i'm watching you i'm coming for you you see we never say look i got this wrong i'm not in a good relationship right now i've entered 10 relationships nothing has worked probably there's something there is my outlook about life there is my perspective is ego stinging to come to a point where you accept but that is the point of true liberty are you getting what i'm saying i begged my father for car to go and greet her father with it my father refused my father only gave me the car wouldn't i be married by now an entitlement mentality i begged my father for jam money he refused to give me though i've not written the jam let me fail but i see if your destiny is in your father's hands please hear me koinonia i'm speaking to you in the name of the lord jesus christ you must quit that that entitlement mentality from today some of us have been sending insultive text messages to our loved ones insulting them and say i'm disappointed i asked you for five thousand you cannot even send it mommy this is to let you know i respect you as my mother but i'm, I'm disappointed send you are cursing yourself people return back to their rooms and look at their roommates and they are frowning when i know cook ah you didn't bring ingredients you didn't bring the food you didn't buy kerosene you didn't wash the plates but there is an entitlement mentality something in you lies to you that the whole world is just about you that's the entitlement mentality pastor jakes i beg i feel get something from you he said no what for and you're hungry entitlement that's why you see in many churches there are all kinds of people who wait for people to share testimony Oh, God gave me three million and somebody is waiting for them immediately after the service. Say, well done, sir. Ah! Your testimony really touched me. You see, I hope there are no people who do that kind of thing here. So you are a pest to everybody around you. You are just waiting for people to succeed. And then they pay you like it's a right. Your success depends entirely on you and God never forget that is God speaking to us I knew this early in life and it has helped me that belief that somebody will make you successful is devilish grow up tonight and get out of that mindset why are you not playing your keyboard very well and eh, nobody bought keyboard for me now who will buy it why have you not risen to that dimension why have you not started the business where will i get the capital everybody i meet is not giving me who was assigned to give you you know the entitlement mentality is an ugly mentality it makes you believe everything in the world is all about you you carry your problems and distribute it you just come have you seen people like that they come and meet you the guy talking is wearing trainers of eleven thousand. Is wearing stock jeans of over 6,000. Dressing well and he's saying, um, I just came to meet you, Kai. Food stuff has finished. As if it's what is a, it's a surprise to you. Shouldn't it finish? Are you not using it? Food stuff has finished. And he said, um, so how can I help you now? He said, I need like 30. 30 will do me. Look at he's He's seeking help from somebody. And he's coming with a childish, right? entitlement mentality there are some of us who and that's the danger the danger there is when somebody starts helping you it almost becomes like a right have you seen people that came to our homes or our families they were trained parents took care of them at a point that entitlement mentality started have you seen people like that terrible thing you see a man and his wife, maybe rain washed their house and they came to stay in your house for one month. Right? Very soon they start complaining. 
I've been watching the way madame is putting food for her husband. Ah, what did you expect? I noticed the way she puts food for my own husband. You are squatting in somebody's house. Entitlement mentality. My uncle gave me a job in this company. How can I be in this company? My uncle is there and I'm not one of the directors. My uncle, Uncle Solomon, that grew up in our boys' quarters, I cooked for him. So what? So what? You come late, they put a circular in, in, your, in your reception desk. Resume work by 6.30, you come by 10. You've done that for three years. They didn't, um, they didn't promote you. Your uncle has done everything to lift you. And you are not cooperating yet. Entitlement mentality. How many people have we hated innocently in life? How many of our parents have we called witches and wizards because of entitlement mentality? To an extent, some of us can go somewhere and buy clothes and say they should go and meet your mother to collect the money or your father or your brother. I refuse that mentality. I refuse it. I refuse it. I refuse it. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's God speaking to us. Some of these things I'm saying, when it applies to you and it shoots at you like an arrow, just let it enter you because it will, it will refine you and it will make you as gold. Ladies and gentlemen, let me announce to you again that transition is here. Embrace it. Whether you like it or not, while I sat down, I think it was um, whether January or so, miracle service, and they were the celebrants. If your birthday is January, come out, and I saw a lot of people smiling, and I said, transition, transition. Praise the Lord. Whether you are prepared or not, transition is here. Praise the Lord. My, my sister did something that touched me today. In the afternoon, while I was just meditating, I got an email from my sister. And she sent me, I, I still want to do it. I've been trying to do that on my phone. But it's, I wanted to show all of you, I wanted us to project it here, our old six massacre 2009 crusade crusade photo i really would love us to have that i think we can walk i have it in my email eh? get me a laptop with internet and i'll transfer it yes i want you to see it one day we'll come up we have the video i think we have the video of our 2007 crusade you will see all of us there you see victor the head of department of protocol they all held firewood on their head Hey, oh. that's what the song they were singing and jumping hey why you see us so lean looking like like whatever transitions but here we are today 10 years after now we will look back you will see the pictures of today and you will smile you will tell your daughter that was me say are you hearing that was me i was serving the lord all my life so don't think is this lie that most of our parents lied to us they said they were su president they were the best footballer in their school they were best everything our own has proof you can see it and you can know praise the lord one last mentality mediocre mentality mediocre mentality mediocre mentality we are still talking about the reasons why people become failures and mediocres and I'm, I've just touched on number one media mentalities, mindsets really mediocre mentality what is a mediocre mentality is the mindset that tells you impact, influence is carnal it's a mindset that is satisfied with being small, being quiet the mindset of an average life the belief, the fallacy that an average life is the greatest way to make heaven is a mediocre mentality. That mindset of being small. Have you had people like that? Me, all I want, God, just give me one small golf, one, two house, anywhere, whether in the bush or wherever, I'm grateful. Let me just have my two children. If we can eat food in the morning, even if it's once a day, 
God be praised. It's a mediocre mentality. No matter how spiritual you try to make it. There are churches like that. We're happy. We're a simple, nice family church. We're happy. This guy has been there for the past 10 years. We're there. We're not doing anything. We're not letting anybody know what God. We're happy. We're okay like that. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. And they will break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain. Kingdom advancement, kingdom advancement is tied to one word, influence. One word, influence. Without influence, there is no kingdom advancement. I want you to know that. When the church is quiet in a society, there is no influence and there is no advancement. The church in Nigeria is not quiet at all. That's why we are involved in everything in this country. The church, Nigeria is the most religious country in the whole world. And forget about the errors here and there. I tell you the church in Nigeria is alive. We have a say in everything from the executive government. Everybody knows in Nigeria that you don't downplay the church and go scot free influence I've studied revivals I've studied um, technological revivals it was all tied to the church are you getting what I'm saying we need men and women of influence get my teaching conquering cosmos there I teach on what we call strategic apostolic invasion it's not just sharing tracks influence what is wrong if Koinonia has 10 bank managers as, as your members, you imagine that. We call that influence. Where one person represents a nation. Influence. Influence. Are you getting what I'm saying? Please don't ever reject influence in your life because God wants to give it to you. It was through influence Jesus was able to advance the kingdom. The Bible says it was noised abroad. That that celebrity was in town and he had the opportunity to teach and to heal and to deliver he says in in matthew chapter 5 he says you are the salt of the earth you add value you give meaning to the earth you are not just a tongue talker he calls you the salt of the earth he calls you the light of the world and he says you are a city not like a city not a village you are a city hallelujah i refuse to be small in my life nobody will preach me into being small i rejected it long ago i still reject it koinonia will not be small souls are saved because of the influence destinies are changed because of the influence during the retreat media people told us the targets that they want on facebook and the rest and i told them go for it we are going all the way for it let me tell you, this is not a small ministry. We are visionary people and we refuse to be small. And you will never be part of this vision and be small. I will challenge you. I will challenge you. Thank God for where you are. But we will not allow you to remain there. You must rise. Because there is coming a renaissance. There will be an emergence of people in every area. Hallelujah. It was a mirage. In Nigeria, if one person owned a television station, is that true? Television station. I remember that time you own a television station, they tell you every kind of thing. And God said, Come on, where are those apostles? And men and women started rising. 2005, the Lord revealed to me that there will be 37 Christian stations in Nigeria. And today, how many lives have been blessed through the power of the media? Are you getting what I'm saying? All the technological gurus and the rest. Imagine you making a, a laptop that the, he must not mention Jesus. 
but imagine that you put it on and and the sound for it to start is a deep worship song whether you like it or not you must buy it hallelujah praise god you must make your presence known is this is the is is the principle of dominion part of dominion is to make your presence known in a territory then they will adopt your ideologies then they will embrace your convictions if there are if there are hundred millionaires i'm not talking of one million real millionaires in this place i guarantee you your spheres of influence will I, something happened I think um, I went one of our ladies here she's she's technically my account officer with one of the banks and um, and uh, we're going she had been forcing me to come and collect my card my card had expired and she was forcing me to come and collect the card she said I should get back into banking with them and all of that and then eventually I went she had prepared everything when I got there she was greeting me her superior was just looking at me who is this guy and before i know it i saw one koinonia member coming again and then one other lady coming to greet i said that's right this is the kind of testimony we want to be seen when they came and they were greeted ah the man squared up and said oh, well done sir i told him i said this this lady is the one who is forcing me to come to this bank look at her see that what does that mean promote her and lift her because she's doing a good job the influence of the kingdom i don't know who taught you that mediocrity brings glory to God. I want you to know that the more you have result, the more your words become powerful. Results add weight to your words. Results add Refuse a mediocre mentality. Refuse it. Hallelujah. Refuse it. Pastor Jakes in his place of work within a short time when he was announcing his, his promotion and his lifting I smiled I said those guys those guys come on now physical competence the anointing wisdom grace everything combined you can't be small shout it I refuse to be small say it I refuse to be small please I'm challenging you thank God for the photocopying business but don't die there Start small, but I like you to see beyond. Who is God speaking to? I like you to see beyond. Refuse to be small. The influence of the kingdom is the key to strategic apostolic invasion. Michael Jackson is long dead, but last year alone, his album made 150 million US dollars. In fact, when he died, Three days after his death, they made $120 million at his death. The man who feeds you is the one you will listen to. Is that not true? For as long as the world system keeps feeding us, we will be forced to listen to them. But I tell you, there is an army. Ha! There's an army rising up this is why we are teaching these teachings there's an army rising up there's an army rising up they will break every chain break every chain break every chain break every chain Break every chain. Sing one more time. There's an army. There's an army rising. Things will not continue to be this way. I tell you. There's an army rising up. Break every chain. To break every chain. It is not the will of God for you to be small. It does not glorify God in any way when you are small. 
John 15, I think from verse 8, when you read down, it says, Herein is our Father glorified. When ye bear much fruit, much fruit, not little fruit, much fruit, much fruit. Look, I'm not talking of some carnal, fleshly wanting to make it in life. I'm talking of lifting with an assignment. Influence that is intentional as a means to an end. It makes your words powerful. You are able to speak. Hallelujah. That's why we must speak into your life. Oh, you will get the oil company job. That devil will not stop you. The, the, no, there are the principles. You will get it. You will be wealthy. You will be blessed. The devil will be alive to see it. I will never raise a poor congregation. Never raise a weak congregation. A weak congregation produces a weak man of God. A weak ministry that has no voice. I will never let anybody watch me on TV and scroll and say next. This useless man, part of the noisemakers. No. That when you listen, you say this is it. I had one word and it changed me. You must embrace the influence of the kingdom. I don't know what you have been taught, but you must change your mind. We have small parents, innocent but small, small families, small everything, small. I got my small degree, I read my thing, I don't even want anything. Let me just get, I got one teaching in one LEA school, I'm okay. 7,000 is enough, what am I looking for in this life? Stop that, stop that kind of devilish thinking. Remember, let me always balance this. I'm not talking of this carnal, lustful affinity. For the things of the world i'm talking of gaining kingdom influence with the exact intention right the exact intention to bring the glory and the kingdom of god there was a time jesus came in the city and you stole the show from all the scribes and pharisees the guys were angry they said they are not listening to us again ah uh -uh, what happened look let me tell you koinonia we are a city we are a city. You are not a village. You are not small. I separate you from that small mindset. You may be in a small room now. Think big. You may be in a small hut now. No problem. Soak the gary, but see the world. There is much to do for the kingdom. God has increased and expanded our influence through the teachings and through the meetings that we've got. And we have seen more souls. Look at the gentleman. Where is that guy that came that shared his testimony? Oh, he's outside. Oh, look at that's the gentleman. All the way. We call it kingdom influence. How many people claim they saw Jesus and he said the words he gave them. He said they should take it out of the earth. But they are poor and broke. It has not come out. Not even everybody in the city knows. And it's not that they had a wrong encounter. Hallelujah. Influence. Influence. You must embrace it in the name of Jesus. Say, I refuse to be small. Say it, I refuse to be small. Challenge yourself, I refuse to be small. The second reason why young people become failures. My spirit is fired up. We are going to pray. The second reason. I told you the first is the mindset. Second reason is laziness. Laziness. You're my treasure, my priority. Who can compare to you? Great is the match of your royalty. Oh, morning star, you true.
so laziness everybody say laziness the second reason why people become failures in life is laziness there is this spirit of laziness that is upon many nigerians upon many young people an inertia a reluctance to move forward inactivity satisfied with their levels closely tied to laziness is the spirit of procrastination i will do it another day oh i will do it is it not savings i will save the money is it i will do it i will do it procrastination is a dangerous spirit pray for your destiny i will pray settle down begin to study in the unique area god has called you man of god study about church growth i will study one day until all your members leave and then you start getting angry at everybody all these people are you sure they didn't touch their heart? go and touch it too if it's available like that hallelujah laziness there are many lazy people in nigeria and the bible talks a lot about laziness the bible talks about laziness the moment you are lazy get set to beg you have signed an agreement with begging no matter who you are and i have found something with lazy people hate begging they hate begging they feel embarrassed don't worry just bring it bring it bring it i'll do it fast Lazy people hate begging. Hallelujah. Sorry for the little distraction. Let's pray. Pray in tongues while I do this. Is that all right? All right, so go ahead and pray. Pray in tongues very quickly so that it will sink. It will sink down. Your word is producing results in my life. Hallelujah. Laziness. There are many of us who are lazy. Look at me. When it is time to sit down, you sit down. But if it is time to get up and act, huh? when there is an anointing for something, you stand up and act. There are many people that if you took action when God spoke to you, you would have built the house by now. There are many people, if you took action, you would have gotten that job action laziness i would do it no unfortunately time does not wait for everybody and if you want to wait until everything is right you will never move in your life the bible says he that considers the weather will never sow and as a result will never reap hallelujah laziness inaction procrastination that inertia refusal to move forward you are sitting in your room somebody just sows a thousand naira and the lord says get up and go to jordan bookstore i gave you that money because there is a book i want you to buy say no problem you sit with that money immediately you see before you know it you have spent 200 naira from it see that 
before you know it, you finish the money, you just sit down there. Let me tell you one way the devil kills people. Sleep. I know God gives sleep, but Satan can also give sleep. Sleep. This sleep. It looks little. I was teaching the school of ministry students and I told them, if you sleep eight hours a day when you are 30 years, you've slept for how long? You've slept for 10 years of your life. Exactly. By the time you are 30 years, just know that you are in reality 20 years because the whole 10 years went into sleeping. You sleep from 8 o'clock. You wake up. Round one waking is around 4. You just wake up and check if there's any Nigerian film around. When there is none, you lie down. You wake up around 9. That's the second phase of, of the waking up. It's not like you sleep marathon. You wake up, just browse around, and then maybe you plug water for bathing and get back to sleep. Before you know it, it's 1 o'clock. You just yawn and stand up. And you sit down, you are lazy. as guy sleep. You will be poor, guaranteed. Please, brothers and sisters, hear me. Love not sleep too much. It will rob you of the anointing. I, I don't know any man who carries true anointing who loves sleep. No. No, sir. No, sir. I've been awake today since at about, I think maybe 2.30 or 3. God is my witness. I've been awake. And as I go back now, it's not like I'm going to go and jump on my bed and start sleeping. No. What is your concept of success? Look, success is not cheap. It's not for children. T.D. Jakes wrote a book, Can You Stand to Be Blessed? It takes stamina to be distinguished. So for those of us who think the anointing comes and you just lie down and sleep and snore away your life and wake up and find yourself successful, you are joking. Wake up. Sleep. Huh? you lie down and sleep it brings a lot of things forgetfulness you are 30 years you forget about everything somebody says I'm coming he comes and he says why are you here he says, I said I'm coming say, oh I remember he said, but you are too young for that unnecessary sleep when the night time when you should wake up and study and pray some of us people can be gisting they can even lie down on your bed and wake up. You didn't know that anybody lay down there. Because you sleep and, and the sleep is so deep. You wake up and you are frowning. Ah, why did you wake me? It's a bad attitude. I know you won't like me. I will still say it. I love you too much to leave you that way. Especially for the gentleman. Please love not sleep. If you find yourself sleeping around, just, just imagine money disappearing from your life one two anointing disappearing from your life wake up don't you know there is the mystery of the night time look at the prophets in the bible look at men look job said i mean the psalmist said in the night time during his time of meditation when things are revealed to him the night time is when great men get insights is the time where men of power travel in the spirit okay it's, it's, it's true that you are tired at least three four or so wake up don't let your body cheat you you need to drag it and say no way i refuse to let my flesh make me a failure in life who is god speaking to there are certain people even five o'clock waking up in the morning that families used to do you know that thing they do five o'clock you wake up you carry your bible drop on your bed and sleep on it somebody will come and see you and think you are on, on that deep med who are you cheating who are you lying to when you see somebody please don't play that kind of expensive game with your destiny i'm not telling you not to sleep there are times i take out time to rest but brothers and sisters, if you must be great, there is a price. Please hear me, Koinonia. There is a price. Hallelujah. So laziness, we must walk on it. Laziness. Kill procrastination from your life. There are some things God has told you people to do. God told you to sow a seed. I will do it tomorrow. 
God told you to get up and read on leadership, I will do it tomorrow. Do it now. Do it immediately. Number three, fear. The reason why many people become failures and become mediocre in life, fear. Fear. Fear of failure. Fear of being embarrassed. Not just failure, but fear of repeated failure. It's true that failure is embarrassing. It's true that failure is lashing, is ego stinging. But it is in your failure that you find the door to true victory. Please hear what I'm saying and take it seriously. Fear of being seen as a failure. Is that not what is responsible for our fake lives? Right? You go and borrow a shoe of 20,000 naira and you wear and say, this shoe, 20,000 naira. Is it your own? No. Because you don't want to fail. People borrow phones. I beg, I just want to stroll to Ribadu. Can you help me with your phone? What for? You borrow watch, borrow clothes, borrow phone, borrow everything, borrow mindset, borrow everything. And in the end of it, you find out that there is no authentic life. I've told us again and again in Koinonia, stop trying to look successful. Pay the price and be successful. Pay the price. That's why we don't discriminate anybody here. I don't want to know who you are or who your father is in terms of maybe preference and all of that. I treat everybody with honor and dignity because I believe everybody can be everything if you get the word. Hallelujah. Fear of failure. Look at me. Why didn't you start the business? Failure made you to give a lot of excuses. Why didn't you go and apply for the job? have not served do they take people who have not served did you go did you go you see ba look at me many of us write a lot of prayer requests next week now there will be another one i, I you know i kneel down to pray and i see it some of you is full scab you write it and then you write a uh, please turn over that means it has not finished you there's still some more but the issue is that do you really believe that as the anointing comes on it you will need to take action you see why I've been teaching us on faith. Faith in one word is obedience. Action. I refuse fear. Is it because people will talk about you? Fail and see whether people won't talk about you. What you are running away from will come. Whether through the door of success or failure, it will still come. The greatest way to reply critics is massive success. Continue your results. Let the result keep speaking. You wrote jam. You didn't pass. So what? Why don't you write again? Are you hearing what I'm saying, please? Fear. Nigerians can fear. And many of us, that fear makes us to give ourselves excuses. I'm young. Please, there's time for everything. When is the time? I'm young. He told Jeremiah, do not say I am a child. Don't say I'm a child. Say I'm a child. Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett, the, the CEO of Berkshire Hathaway. One of the top three wealthiest people in the world. He was asked a question that um, was the greatest mistake he made in his life. And he said he started investing at a um, very late. What is the late? Eight years old. Eight years old, Sila. Think about what I just said. There are people to start training and building their children, they say it's too small. Do you know there are some of you? If you talk to your parents about finances as you are now, they'll say, What are you what are you talking about it for? It's, it's an innocent mindset, but it's poisonous. So they tell you, Don't worry. Ah, why, why are you rushing? And then before you know it. You now have to face life by yourself and you make a lot of blunders. Say, I refuse fear. Say it, I refuse fear. There are two kinds of fear. Fear of trying and fear that comes as a result of the memory of your past failure. Some people have refused to get into relationships. The last one didn't work. Who said all would not work? 
you have made adjustments I remember I went to minister somewhere and I gave a woman a word I told her I said madam um, I see that something happened in your home but I'm seeing you marrying again ah! no please oh, my children it's okay I said ah, madam what's the issue I'm just telling you what God is telling me that a man is going to come ask your hand in marriage and you'll be gloriously said say me marry a man me men look at my children me men. the woman was saying I said madam I'm a man no please this one that you are talking about men I see it's not every man that everybody blah 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 blah, blah, blah. The woman started crying I said madam God is bringing a good said, okay you know how women talk okay well, let's see fear fear that's what has stopped some of us from being champion you are used to failing the day you succeeded and they told you you succeeded it's a lie don't play games with me don't you know that the divine life part of the blessings of the divine life is a life of success no matter how you have failed in life hear me i want you to believe that you can come back alive are you hearing me say i refuse to fear say it i refuse to fear. see there is a there is an let me let me use this slang there is an i don't send mentality you have to give life and give people if you want to make it some of us are too careful what will what will zuera say now what will mom we are too careful that 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 excessive care is not is not care unto faith it's care unto doubt and it will kill you there are people today who have refused to learn how to drive because of fear what if i capsize in a gutter you have refused to learn there are others who have refused to learn how to do a lot of things god gave you opportunity to learn so many things there's tailoring now professional tailoring somebody from uk just came and said i want to train you I said, Kai, me please i don't want any insult i've seen the way they insulted my madam i, I, I don't want headache you are ready to fail if you think like that you are going to fail in the name of jesus i release upon you the spirit of courage courage you have to face life with courage brothers and sisters wake up stop giving excuses and tell yourself i refuse to fear i refuse to fear it is a risk to do everything in life the only guarantee you have is the word of god get up and in the name of jesus take steps refuse to fear koinonia i'm preaching to you refuse to fear refuse to fear refuse it i know you carried over the course go back again with courage fear has kept a lot of people down. the bible says and to deliver them who through fear of death have all their lifetime be subject to bondage to pray for a sick person fear you're already stretching your hands you are looking and say ah, i'm only in welfare department well, let me not disgrace myself here fear lastly one of the biggest reasons why many people become failures ignorance of kingdom principles that guarantee a life of success and impact ignorance of kingdom principles ignorance this is in my opinion the biggest reason ignorance of kingdom principles that guarantee a life of success and impact joshua chapter 1 verse 8 it says this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate during day and night that thou mayest observe to do all that is written you cannot observe what you do not know he said then not before not during then shall thou make thy ways prosperous and you shall have not any kind of success good success ignorance look at me i know we know that by now in koinonia that there are laws in the kingdom prosperity is not magic it's not a wish there are kingdom principles a life of influence you want to be a career of the glory and the power of god it's not a wish there are pathways to it 
you want to carry honor upon your life you can be blessed it doesn't mean you are honorable it says and Jabez was more honorable honor is a law in the spirit there is what brings honor you can be rich and not have honor you can be anointed and not have honor when honor comes on your life everybody knows that there is honor upon your life hallelujah longevity has a principle longevity influence has a principle and he said in matthew chapter 13 now i think verse 11 or so if i'm not mistaken he said it has been given unto you say it has been given unto me one more time it has been given unto me to know the mysteries of the kingdom everybody say the mysteries of the kingdom it is on the strength of those mysteries that you will enjoy dominion it is on the strength of those mysteries that you will do great and mighty things in life nobody will just come and bless you for nothing when during our series the mysteries of the kingdom i teach on the law of exchange and i told you nothing goes for nothing nothing goes for nothing there is an exchange that must happen hallelujah very important these are some of the reasons why people become failures in life. And part of this is working in our lives, one or two or more, or for some of us, even all of them. We are going to challenge, challenge the gates of failure and say, in this season of the rain, I'm breaking out. No way. I won't remain like that. I won't park where my father parked and become a failure. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny he leads me and guides me to the city of papa he leads me rise up on your feet and let's begin to pray bless the lord for this word tonight these are preparatory teachings for the series that is coming i need to prepare us i don't want to just waste the revelations that god has given me go ahead and prophesy lord you are leading me day by day i keep rising Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are praying, pick up your notebook. You are going to read all those first prayer point, the five areas that you must focus on. Your spiritual life, financial life, family life, career life, relationship. Lift your voice and begin to prophesy on them one by one. And say, Lord, I must excel in every one of these areas. Go ahead and pray. I excel in my spiritual life. Shake it, 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 it. I'm moving from one level of the anointing to another. One level of grace to the other. My relationship with Jesus is becoming stronger and stronger. I'm on fire for God. I'm on fire. No lukewarmness in my life. No lukewarmness in my life. No religion in my life. Come on, pray. 
I'm on fire for God. Burning, burning for the kingdom. Pray for your finances. I refuse to be poor. I refuse to be broke. I refuse to be a beggar. I make up my mind that I am a blessing. I am a blessing, not a liability. I am a blessing. I reject poverty. I cause that spirit in my life. Pray. My home is a place of love, a place of blessings. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm an exceptional father, an exceptional husband, an exceptional leader. Pray. An exceptional priest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. I gave you five reasons or four reasons why people become failures. Look, be sincere as we pray this prayer now. The media is helping us. You're going to see it here. When you see that there is any, any area that applies in your life, through the ministry of prayer, uproot it. There are mindsets that you know must change. Attack them in the place of prayer. Don't feel condemned, but don't keep quiet. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. I refuse a dependency mentality. I refuse a dependency mentality. I am a giver. I am a blessing. Not a liability. Going on here, pray. Shake it, take it, I refuse to give excuse for failure. I refuse to excuse failure. I refuse to explain failure in my life. Pray, 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 pray. Inside and outside, pray. Pray. This is a prophetic moment. This is about your destiny. Pray. Pray against the spirit of laziness. I refuse to be lazy. From today, I kill laziness. Procrastination. I cause it for my life. Prompt obedience. Prompt obedience. Shake it, take it, take it, take it, take it, protest, it, take it, take it, Pray. Rabaka, talaba, take Pray against the spirit of fear. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. I refuse to be afraid. I refuse the fear of failure. The fear of the future, the fear of the mockery of men, I refuse it. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing. Where you were watching us from, and then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially, and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain